This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map. Tournament Odyssey Red Zone for game number one of the Autumn Dual Upper Bracket Semifinal Best of Seven. Kicking it off in the northern position as the green nod. This is Drive. And in the southern position, playing as the red GDI. Give it up for Bike Rush Owns. And welcome to the Autumn Dual coverage. This uh, is maybe a couple of months late. It is no longer Autumn. We are deep in the throes of winter. We're not even, you know, people always think of winter as starting maybe in like November or something. It doesn't technically start until, uh, you know, December 21st-ish. But, uh, yeah, I missed the mark a little bit on the Autumn Dual in terms of timing. However... Big thanks to uh, Reminder for sending me these replays. Big thanks to another Stas and Svensson for the $200 prize pool. They donated the money for this event. And of course, design by Drive. Whoever was running this event decided to get Drive to design their key art. And uh, so we, of course, have that as a wallpaper at a link in the description. So if you want the wallpaper, check that out always great to have drive designing things because he does a phenomenal job and he's also playing in this game and in this event so drive retired a little while before this event but when he retired he did say that he may come back and still play from time to time he's just not focusing on kane's wrath as much as he was before and in the retirement uh style of all top tier gamers of all time it's like i'm gonna stop playing for a little bit while a little while but i'm not necessarily completely gone forever and as a result here we have drive back in this event makes it to the upper bracket semifinals, so makes it through the group stage through the early parts of the playoffs and the playoffs being double elimination does mean that if he loses here versus bike rush owns well he's still got a chance but maybe this will be him coming out of retirement to dethrone Bike Rush, which would be pretty phenomenal to see. Bike Rush playing GDI, everything looking pretty standard. Drive playing Nod. Could very well be a fast, one clicky based, uh, one click kind of style where you want to go for those big, powerful one clicks quickly off of your natural expansion or. You know, maybe he has something else in mind. Goes for the second War Factory right away at the Natural Expansion. Bike Rush owns a little bit more economy focused. Couple of APCs with rockets, couple of pit bulls, a nice poke prod force. Not often do we see that kind of a combo do a lot of damage, but at least it is there if Drive is being super greedy, if Drive is out of position, that combo gives bike the option to do a little poking and prodding in this case we don't really see it maybe those units will come back uh relevant for the defense or they'll find a way to sneak around the sides but for the current moment just some tussling just some jostling from these two players bikes manage to get a kill on a pit bull the pit bulls hit back they clear up a bike and drive and bike rush you know not too much of a difference between these two players Bike Rush with a little bit of an economic advantage, plus 11k per minute, a 1k income advantage overdrive. Not a huge surprise considering one of these guys went refinery first and then the war factory, and the other one went for the war factory first. So slight economic advantage for Bike Rush certainly is not a surprise. Also, I think he just leached some blue Tiberium, so maybe a little bit of a boost from that couple of predator tanks now mixed in with this army there's a decent number of scorps on the north side drive should have the forces to hold this back this is not some kind of insane big punch that's coming in from bike rush but it does allow bike rush to more fully secure that blue tiberium in the middle of the map we saw the harvester there just a moment ago bikes swinging around the left side for drive but for the current moment bike rush owns is happy to just steal this blue tiberium might have another harvester on the way might send one more harvester there to clean up the rest of that blue tiberium since he's got control of the middle of the map and yeah drive tier three he's got something queued maybe it's his tier three maybe it's something else mind drop does come down 
one predator tank pays the price there and not too much more of a fight once scorpion will pay the price on the other side micro shown's gonna put a little bit more pressure this is a lot of infantry is that double that's double hand of nod pumping out reinforcements here for drive so he is not going to be overwhelmed by this force from bike rush but bike rush able to expand up to his high ground behind all of this he secures a third base which is going to be good for him i am expecting to see did he i guess drive has not yet gone operation center i just am realizing that drive has focused so much on infantry that he doesn't have tier two he isn't you know on his way towards tier three and clicks there is uh it's a little bit slow on the tech front for drive but he's got a massive army he's got infantry upgrades we saw the secret shrine he's got tib infusion he's got the cabals as well drive moves out into the middle of the map bike rush owns goes for that high ground expansion he holds off any attacking forces for now but he may be losing his main base if that is where drive wants to put on the pressure for now bike rush owns just backing away if he can extend out this fight a little bit longer buy himself some more time give his sniper teams more time to fire off those shots and of course give his third base more time to build up and drive has uh has completely walked away so just some losses for drive as he exits this area he's once again gonna try and sneak around the side will find himself a harvester harvester kill is nice doesn't commit for it so he won't get the kill on the harvester and instead bike Shones is pushing back the infantry army in the middle of the map and now bike Shones is going to be able to defend against this bike buggy harassment squad on the left side sniper teams continuing to work away at those infantry forces apc a apcs with a AP ammo are a powerful force against infantry. And for now, Bike Rush Owns is putting on a bit of pressure and also stopping Drive from taking a third base. Drive can't expand through all of this attack. He does have a flame tank, though, moving out to the right side of the map, going for a bit of harassment. We finally have Tier 3 up and running. Obelisk is here on the front line. No shredder turrets or anything to deal with the infantry forces of Bike Rush, so it's going to be up to the Harvester to go for the crush on the rocket forces of Bike Rush. Flame tank will eventually be stopped, and the second flame tank will be headed off at the pass laser fence will keep that refinery alive no blue flame for nod so no worries about your buildings just dis being destroyed immediately by that uh by that flame tank scan comes in bike rush sees everything we have tier three we have a redeemer on the way but we do not have any kind of one clicks just yet main base gets cleaned up drive finally finding some damage against the base of bike rush might be able to get a power plant as well not a huge win for drive but at least he got a couple of structures here with that third flame tank his first two flame tanks didn't do very much here on the right side of the map orchestrike tags that tech lab bike rush owns knows that it's there even with the stealth field he at least saw it with the scan and he will be able to call in that strike we do also have an airfield from bike rush owns i don't think he's gone tier three just yet yes he has there it is down at the natural expansion kind of an exposed position for a tier three location the redeemer is now out i assume it's a marv on the way a reclamator hub on the way for bike rush owns and uh, we'll see if Bike Rush Owns tries to shut down the tech of Drive. He tagged it before the Redeemer was finished, but he didn't actually send anything over to kill it. So the Redeemer finished. And, uh, well, the Redeemer's already out, so I don't know if Bike Rush really cares too much about killing the Tier 3 now. He did that little bit of damage, and now he's not worried about it all that much anymore. Bike Rush Owns, he's got those Juggernauts. He had something queued. Uh, there it is. The Reclamator Hub over here next to the Tier 3 as well. With everything calming down, Drive has been able to expand up to the high ground. He's got his third base up and running, and that almost looks like a trap being set for this Redeemer. The Redeemer is going to back away. Railguns, I have to assume, the upgrade being purchased by Bike Rush on the way as well. And Bike Rush is going to move those forces a little bit further forward. Rifleman, I think, gets torched by that Redeemer. 
A couple of riflemen going for scouts around the map. Marv now out on the field, so the fight of the epic units can begin. A couple of stealth tanks here for drive. Manages to snipe one harvester, and then he will split his stealth tanks off in, in opposite directions. So if one of them gets spotted, the other one can escape quite easily. Hammerhead goes for the scout on the high ground, and the Hammerhead goes down. Orchestrike getting called in, and a little bit worried about more aircraft. Drive deploys a SAM site. Mike Rochones, he's got those rail guns, so those Preds have some extra firepower, and he is also going for a two-pronged attack. He's hoping to hit the natural expansion, to take out some harvesters, and hit the third base at the same time. And, uh, well, this third base attack is going to get routed, turned around immediately, but the natural expansion slash first base attack are going to be identified. Bike Rochon still chasing ghosts in the back of his own base. Those stealth tanks really bringing that Marv way far back from the front lines. And that Marv just, you know, hanging out back there with a couple of Predator tanks and a Juggernaut. Not a huge focus on Juggernauts from Bike Rochon's a uh, very straightforward GDI player. But in this case, he's not playing that typical late game GDI style. Very infantry heavy by comparison. Something being called in, and it is going to be the Redeemer marching forward. Should be able to push back the rest of these forces. Does get the Tier 2, so nicely done by Bike Rochones to snipe that uh, tech. And he is potentially... Well, we'll see if he's actually going to make use of aircraft to uh, take advantage of that. But for the current moment, this stealth tank will go down. Unfortunately, not going to claim too many more Harvester lives on the GDI side of things. Redeemer cleans up the attacking forces at the natural expansion, but can the Redeemer stop the Juggernaut, stop the Marv, stop the base crawl from Bike Rush Owns? Juggernaut shots called in from downtown. They will land on that tier three. That Orca strike from like five minutes ago was the precursor to that uh, sniper team being able to call in the Juggernaut shots and clean up that tier three from across the map. So it did eventually come back to pay off the setup was revealed there where the setup was paid off at the uh, at the late stages of this game a couple of more stealth tanks gonna be able to clean up at least one juggernaut wandering randomly through the middle of the map but the real power of bike rushes forces of bike rush is this push at the third of drive bike rush has already cleared out his own third base he doesn't have much more to be gained from just sitting back and waiting. So if he can bring the pressure, bring the pain, and shut down Drive's third, then that is going to be very good for Bike Rush. Tech has been fully reset. Drive, I don't think, has rebuilt very much of that. Mind Drop, I have to assume that's what that was going to be. Gets cleaned up, wiped out. Tier 2 is back up. Vertigo's might uh, be on the menu, but I guess not, since Tier 3 got cleaned up by those jugs drive falling to pieces here his main his third base will be annihilated and this is very unfortunate for the economy of drive a lot of harvesters up here a lot of refineries as well and they are all going to be laid waste one avatar trying to make his way up the hill not going to find much of anything rage gen fires off from back from the back door one juggernaut will pay the price the second juggernaut taking some heavy damage stealth tank comes in goes for a blast on a couple of buildings and these juggernauts gonna make short work of that avatar as soon as it stops moving it gets cleaned up the redeemer steps away the war factory keeps churning out units and drive is trying to pull some kind of a last ditch defense together over at his natural expansion. Bike Rochon's not going to be marvesting that field of drive. Instead, he will just leave it. He's going on the hunt, going for the kill of the Redeemer. Full surround, and this will be the shutdown of the Redeemer. Even a mind drop coming in there. Another EMP grenade lands right as the Redeemer explodes, and Bike Rush has this game pretty well wrapped up. There could be some kind of a sneaky attack at the back door, but the likelihood of a flame tank and a stealth tank being able to walk over here and knock down the MCV is pretty low. Another avatar gets cleaned up, drives defense, fell apart there. Both players had a couple of instances of walking their forces around the map, not doing much of anything. 
Oh, more flame tanks coming in. Drive really wants to crack open this third base, but with APCs, Predator tanks, watchtowers, and a meager, uh, meager group of infantry here to defend, I don't think a couple of flame tanks on their own are really going to be able to make this happen. Juggernaut's even stomping their way over it. Buys time for drive, but buys time for what? He doesn't have an MCV, and more importantly, he doesn't have much of an economy. One refinery. One refinery and what is effectively long-distance harvesting for all of these harvesters. It can work for a time, but it can't work forever. Mike Rochon's picking up a couple of extra dollars here at his opponent's third base. Might even be worth, uh, you know, dropping another refinery, walking his MCV backwards to his own main base and dropping a refinery so that he can get one harvester and one good refinery location at that main base because the rest of the fields are pretty empty. And by Gorshones, he does need, actually, he doesn't need more cash. He could probably win with just what he's got. Juggernauts, if they get jumped on, they could get annihilated very quickly. We'll see if the infantry actually have the firepower to do that, because everything else here from Bike Rush is ready to tussle and defend these Juggernauts. If it was the Juggernauts by themselves, it would be one thing, but when you've got Three Grenadier squads on one side, Hammerheads, Riflemen, Zone Troopers, and more Grenadiers on the other side. It's just not a fight that Drive is going to win. It's a best of seven, and it is going to be coming down to this hero stealth tank to show what Drive can do in the face of these Riflemen, in the face of these Watchtowers and these Pitbulls. He needs to just pop off and go absolutely insano style to win this game. Unfortunately, with no MCV, there is no way to extend this game artificially and let that hero stealth tank do the good work that he is trying to do. The GG gets called. Drive has been defeated, and that is game number one going to Bike Rush Owns. It's a best of seven, so Drive isn't out of it, but man, that, uh, that, uh, that infantry spike way up high for the nod player crashing down low and that is where things went really south for drive he had that big attack in the early to mid game he did nothing with it a big chunk of that infantry got cut off in the retreat drive says hey everyone go home and in the process of going home, he loses half of his infantry, loses a huge amount of those rockets that he invested cash into. Bike Rochon's just picking them off, popping them off, and making short work of that army. Drive, not in the driver's seat after that, but game number two is coming up. And game number two takes us to Tiberium Rift. It's the one where Drive needs to take back control of this game, of this series, I should say. Mike Rochones, he wants to keep control. And uh, yeah, you guessed it. Everything is looking very standard. These are macro-oriented openers. This is everything is as you would expect. And hey, that's good for us as viewers. We get to see some straightforward play. We get to see some just standard macro games. A little bit concerned. We've got the Scouting Rifleman, perfectly timed by Bike Rush to see the Double War Factory. When you see the deployment of this MCV, it's like, okay, going for a third power plant. But then that, that, that MCV stays in place for a while and the build is slow. It's like, all right, what's going on here? Double War Factory, super duper fast by Drive. So he is looking to zero out that bank account. He's like, I got a thousand bucks. I need to spend it. Mike Rochon's on the other hand. He goes rockets in the APCs. Very necessary for defense. I would be very surprised if he sends these across the map. Maybe he'll poke and prod into the middle of the map a little bit, try and keep an eye on where the forces are coming from, but he needs to get these to the weakest area or to wherever these bike buggy is going to be attacking very, very soon. Drive is going to try and supplement his income, his very late expansion by comparison, with that blue Tiberium. Super fast blue Tiberium, not always worth it. And in this case, Bike Rush owns... He does not have the spend on his bank account of two war factories. He got out that second, or he got out that barracks 
the additional barracks, he got out a couple of rockets, and then he sold it off. He cut his spending off, and now he's refocusing that money into his economy. I assume he will go for War Factory after this. If he goes four refineries right in the face of this, that would be pretty uh, amazing. Power Plant will go down. So Drive doesn't get nothing. He gets the Blue Tiberium in the middle of the map. He gets defensive spending, not even really big defensive spending, uh, from Bike Rush and uh, Drive. I can't believe Bike snuck out three pit bulls. How? How did he sneak out three pit bulls? How do you look at all of this and you sneak out three pit bulls? No! So anyways, Bike Rush owns has a <laughs> three pit bull attack. Normally this does nothing. How do you get a kill on a harvester? Four and a half minutes into a game with three pit bulls. Did 40% damage to another harvester. Anyways, uh, wow. That's... Wow. So, Drive is not <laughs> in a good spot. This is, this is dramatic, uh, upset for Drive's build. I cannot believe that Bike Rochons snuck out three pit bulls and then got a kill on a harvester. Anyways, Drive has a huge plus of units and uh, nothing to do with them. Nothing to do with these units. Orchestra Strike going to be getting called in. Laser Fence will get deployed. This is that, uh, that APC rocket combo. It's not going to do anything. If Drive wanted to, he could pop the APCs. He's going to lose bikes to do it. Orcas will take damage. One of them goes down before the shots land, so the Harvester does get tagged. Is that the weakened Harvester too? Oh my gosh, the RNG is so lucky. Bike Rush owns tags that Harvester for like, you know, I don't know how much of its health. And 40% of its health. And then the Orca Strike hits that same Harvester, the weakened Orca Strike, this Harvester right there which is uh, just sitting around doing nothing currently. Needs to be sent off for repairs. Eventually, it will be repaired. Behind the scenes, Bike Rochon's Ghost Tier 3. We saw the command post. We saw the Orca Strike coming in. It looks like he maybe got a hammerhead or something as well with that. Two hammerheads rolling around with his army. Shatterer on the ground as well. And this just could not, on the mental side, this could not be going better for Bike Rochon's. This is your opponent hard committing into aggression and you spend basically the minimum amount on defense, completely shove away their aggression, and get a kill on the other side of the map. The, the mental state of drive must be completely wrecked. In theory, this army setup from drive should have given him strong map presence for the entirety of the game. Six and a half minutes in, Bike Rush Owens is on the drive side of the map. Look who has control of the map. It's not the guy who went aggro early on. It's Bike Rush Owens. And Bike Rush Owens behind this. Ba -da -da -da. Six minute 50, third base. I haven't even gotten out of bed at 650. He's getting his third base, rocking and rolling. Main base cleaned up, Juggernaut's on the way. Natural expansion is wiped out as well in a good way for Bike Rush Owns. And yeah, we got this seven minute move out of the MCV. The more aggressive player uh, also has the much later third base. Flame Tech coming in, okay, Drive is here. He is not asleep. He will be killing off one refinery. That first refinery doesn't really matter. Pred Tank needs to get the kill. Uh, will this Flame Tank get anything that matters? Maybe an upgrade to Power Plant? The answer is no. So Marv cuts off to the south side. Second Flame Tank. Burn down the MCV, baby. Burn it down. He wouldn't actually get it, but burn it down, baby. Go for something. Sonic Emitter on top of the Flame Tank. One shot and Venom is here. Two shots. Gets quarter of the health of that refinery. Bike Rush Owns will lose a couple of Preds. Could lose a couple of Jugs here. And this Laser Scorps at the same time pressuring this base. Marv is way downtown in on the other side of the map. He is way in the south and he is not present. Bike Rush Owns is going to have to pull some defense together using that static base defense. And uh, ooh, we got ourselves a heroic bike here in the Army of Drive. Bike Rush Owns is fast third base. Finally, he has to pay for something. 
Silverstein. He is Marvestein 80% of the field of drive. Bike Rochon's going to have a huge income boost because of that. And he's also eating that critical third base income of drive. But it may not even matter because drive has set up his mcv in the north he is going for that same contested area as bike rush owns laser scorps a wonderful thing for any nod player and they are finally finding an angle to do some damage. They're gonna burn down a couple of reinforcements. The bike buggy getting torn apart, but it still has some presence in the middle of the map. And fortunately, Drive has bounced back with that Tib core upgrade. So now his bikes hit super hard. He can jump on this Marv and knock it down. With EMP Raider buggies, you can take very minimal damage from that Marv. And that Marv has already paid for itself in terms of Marvesting this field, keeping Bike Rush's economy online during this time of no harvesting and at the same time he can lose it and still have his army and his placement up north first buggy's coming in there's a big emp on top of this but the army is so far away that that first emp is almost going to expire before the rockets impact this marv he does get the attack from the rear which is fantastic and there's going to be the repeat emps good controlling by drive you can see he's got a fresh buggy ready to go and ready to emp that marv if need be doesn't actually need it a little bit of an extra emp there right at the end but drive has been driven away in the north so bike rush owns has marvested the southern field and now he has got himself the economy online and active in the north this is good enough for bike rush owns not great considering how phenomenal the opening was for bike rush owns it's not that good but it is good enough because his economy has survived. He's going to be losing his main base. He may be losing his tech as well. Yeah, it gets sold off right there. So bye-bye to any more Juggernaut production. If he doesn't have the Reclamator Hub already out on the field for a second Marv, which he doesn't, then bye-bye uh, to that as well. Bye-bye to the Mammoth Tanks. And it looks like these Stealth Tanks are going to... This Stealth Tank is going to get at least a couple of kills here. No, Hero Bike! No! Predator Tank. Oh, the APC actually is the one who gets the kill on the hero bike. Drive needs to make something happen. If he lets this third base go unpunished, then Bike Rush Owns will continue to run away with this series. Harvesters will be getting targeted down. Bike Rush Owns has a high-tech army, but it is also a slow-moving army. And Drive, with the Vertigos, will be able to pick off pieces of this army. He needs to preserve some of these Scorpion tanks. Getting a couple of Harvester kills is nice. If he could have killed off one of the refineries, that would have been even nicer. But if he can keep the harassment alive elsewhere, then that is going to be good. Stealth Tank goes down. Bike goes down as well, so everything dies there. And Drive now needs to work on the next next phase of his attack which i hope is very vertigo bomber centric i hope he gets himself out you know four or six vertigo bombers and he manages to just pick this army apart as it tries to cross the map marv is not on the menu just yet for now bike rush owns has some rebuilding to do and fortunately for drive bike rush owns doesn't have a marv marvesting up another part of the map to to add to this one base economy bike rush owns has this double war factory build queue going on great spot for those mines the stealth detection will mean that the harvesters probably won't die oh two harvesters two more harvesters one of them full of tiberium too nice move there by drive he is taking back control of this game a disastrous opening for drive he could pop this war factory is mostly buggies it's not that many bikes but he can pop the war factory shuts it down with an emp as well which will allow him to grab a predator tank if he so chooses and uh he can escape you don't need to get too many more kills than this you don't need to commit a bunch of units into the attack you got the kill on the war factory you might just want to escape without heavy losses all right, well, he took a lot more losses there than he necessarily needed to. Scorpion Tank's going to be pushing in on the other side, and he's going to be moving in. He can take down these Harvesters, and Bike Rush owns. He has got a tight knot of defense with these Mammoth Tanks, with these Juggernauts, but he is not impenetrable. And this is where I wish Drive had more Vertigos. I wish he had, you know, four or six or eight Vertigos to bring those bombing runs a lot more quickly rather than one or two bombing runs every once in a while. 
drive and bike rushes economies have both been hurting quite a bit in the last couple of minutes of this game drive losing that mcv did not ever rebuild uh didn't ever actually expand to a third so he has just been doing this long distance harvesting keeping his main and his natural extremely low on tiberium and the bike rush army moves out the predator tanks and the mammoths get jumped on by this bike buggy mass emps don't need to happen but they will happen at least on top of that juggernaut maybe a little bit of overkill on those emps and the gg comes out bike rush has been defeated and drive puts a point on the board on Tiberium Rift. He gets a very aggressive opening, which gets completely shut down, and then he claws his way back over the course of that game. 14 minutes, 15 seconds, but really, the, like after the five minute mark is really where Drive was concerned because that was a disastrous start for him. And he brought it back anyways and let's see if he can keep the momentum rolling in game number three hope springs eternal and it springs to life here on small town usa for whatever reason this map remains popular in kane's wrath even to this day i mean tour tournament rift which was the most popular map for a long long time has been replaced by tiberium rift and that's not a mandate from tournament organizers or anything like that that's just people choosing to play tiberium rift instead of tournament rift but tournament decision small town usa and eh, downtown dust bowl tournament dust bowl that is Oh, I guess we play the non-poker variant. So even that one is modified a bit. And we have in our, in our game number three for our tiebreaker, a black hand mirror. So I love that this map has persisted for whatever reason. This is one of those maps that people still enjoy playing. And I believe this was loser picks map choice. So I think this means that this is Bike Rush's map choice. And that means he thinks he's got a pretty good shot against Drive on this map. The original design of a lot of these uh, maps from the, from the original map designers they tend to feature less Tiberium than the community maps do. And this is one of those ones where there is no clear natural expansion per player. It is a bit of a, okay, flame tank rush. It is a bit of a dice roll as far as who goes for which one. Mike Rochones knows that this flame tank has been spotted. He's sending it right through the middle of the map. So I'm guessing he doesn't actually want to cross the map with it. He just wants to clear out buildings and secure the middle of the map. I'm not actually sure if he was planning on a flame rush or if he was just planning on this as a control mechanism for the middle of the map. Not ever really planning on going to the other side and killing buildings with it. If so, then, uh, you know, it's going to work pretty well to help him control the middle of the map. Four bikes going to be moving in here for drive. A couple of rockets will be produced by Bike Rush Owens to try and hold off these bikes. And drive is going to come in hard, but I don't think he'll actually get it. The juking is too good. The repair is too good. And drive loses three of the four attacking bikes there. Scorpion tank's going to be the choice of drive after that. Both tib spikes have been captured by both players. And we'll see if anyone manages to sneak through and capture their opponent's tip spike or burn them down one way or another. We do have both players playing black hand, so the hope is one of them will get purifying flame, even though we don't really expect it. We always hope against hope that people will get purifying flame. And I guess that is four out of four bikes now going down. It took a while, but it eventually Bike Rashones did get the kill there. And I guess we don't have the Confessor Cabal upgrade just yet. I'm actually kind of surprised we haven't seen that to help clear out the middle of the map to help control those buildings a little bit better. And I'm also surprised that uh, Bike Rashones didn't send that Black Hand Squad over to burn down that tip spike. I'm not sure exactly what he did with it. Flame Tank back into the middle of the map. This time Drive is not paying as much attention. And so he will lose that squad inside of the building and Bike Rashone's happy to finally have control over the south side of the middle of the city. Tier three is up for Bike Rashone's and it's gonna be the Secret Shrine instead for Drive. 
So he gets an additional hand of Nod. He gets a secret shrine as well. Scorpion tanks being pumped out onto the map. Of course, this is Black Hand, so we do not have laser capacitors as an option on these Scorpion tanks. The end game is going to have to be something other than laser scorps for these players. No purifying flame from either player just yet. And uh, no charge particle beams. No... Uh, no tip core missiles from bike rush. So he just wanted the tech for tech's sake There's the sell-off of the secret shrine and Flame tank will he actually get this tib spike? He might get it. The response from drive was maybe a little bit slow. The result is to main detonation in the middle of drives base, but also he loses the tib spike. Unfortunate for Drive and Bike Rashones going for the second tib spike as well. Cattle's missile fires off, gets one of the refineries, gets a harvester as well. Second harvester was safe from the Catalyst missile back there getting repairs uh, from that war factory. Flame tank goes down. Bike Rashones has managed to hold on to both of his refineries in his main base. Keeping Drive's units on Drive's side of the map does keep the vision for Drive quite limited. Drive is now going to try and sneak something out into the middle of the map. Unfortunately for Drive, he does not have an expansion to carry him through after losing those that refinery, losing those harvesters, having his economy disrupted. And now Bike Rashones, nearly at 10k income per minute versus the 6.5k of Drive. A full 33% less for Drive. Okay, <clears throat> I just had to cut out some coughing there, but Drive is playing with less money and uh, he's got a base push that he is worried about. An MCV walking right down the middle of the map bunch of infantry a couple of purifiers supporting this attack we'll see what drive is able to do for whatever reason in the course of this game neither player has tried for an expansion they have both been uh just happy to sit on this main base obviously bike rush went all the way to one clicks and then he got himself uh a base push after that so this is kind of bizarre but not what I expected to see out of a small town USA map. I thought we were going to be fighting over one of the expansions in the corner. And that is sort of how this game would go. But in this case, Microshone says, I don't want an expansion. I want your main base. And now without tech, well, Drive is going to have to try and hold this off. His harvesters getting just blasted away at in the very opening start of this fight. A couple of flame tanks pushing forward. They will be able to chew through those buildings very quickly. Drive bringing basically everything that he has to the front line. And is it going to be enough? Microshones retreats a couple of these units trying to draw this fight out a little bit longer. All flame to the MCV, but it's not enough. The MCV stands strong. The body blocks come in. The flame tanks get gutted. And Bike Rush owns his shredder turrets are going to be able to leech away the infantry army of Drive. The GG comes out, and Drive has been defeated. Game number three goes to Bike Rush. The momentum goes to bike rush owns it's a best of seven and just like in game number one game number three gives bike rush a one point advantage it's another mirror matchup here in game number four black hand versus black hand on tournament los angeles the map of choice i guess for drive here in the north He's once again staring down the barrel of a bike rush map point advantage in this series. Tournament Los Angeles has been very good to us over the years. I don't know who designed Tournament Los Angeles, but I feel like uh, Tiki Turmoil, Tournament Los Angeles, there's a handful of other maps as well. They've been very good to us over the last four years, especially given us many epic games between good players. And one of those maps that I always love, I always enjoy to see i'm never i'm never sad to see it honestly most of the community made maps are very good or at least good enough and i'm pretty much never sad to see any of them but tournament los angeles tiki turmoil there's some other ones that i'm not thinking of off the top of my head always happy to see those ones winter meltdown yeah you know i don't know other maps <laughs> well always glad to see this one 
Microchones goes for the expansion. Drive, not so quick on the expansion. Third power plant and second war factory. It hasn't worked out in uh, every game for Drive, but it's worked out in half of them. I don't think he went second war factory on Small Town USA. So uh, the second war factory very quickly worked out well once and it didn't work out well once. But, but the nice thing is this is a short walk to your natural expansion, shorter than Tiberium Rift. All right. It's an MCV cell against Bike Rush Owns, but the question is when will Bike Rush Owns see this? So uh, there's the vision of Bike Rush. He will not see this for a little while. He's going Secret Shrine. So he is not going for a fast third refinery. He's going Hand of Nod as well after that. And I would not have expected a double War Factory MCV cell from Drive. Now, Bike Rush Owns is going to spot no MCV at the natural expansion, so he'll know that something is up. He sees this and he's like, wait, there's nothing? I, okay, no refinery, maybe, but nothing? And then he skates into the main base, he sees an empty spot for that MCV, and he immediately goes, it's probably an MCV cell. It might be a weird play of some other kind, but it's probably an MCV cell. EMP control center will be grabbed by that engineer unless Bike Rush manages to snipe it somehow. But I think Bike Rush owns doesn't uh, doesn't have a that engineer on his radar. Drive will pursue some attacks at the natural expansion of Bike Rush owns. He was definitely hoping to catch some harvesters. You can see the bikes show up there and he's like, wait a second, you don't have any harvesters here. What's going on? And unfortunately, uh, Drive didn't get some juicy, juicy harvester kills that he was hoping to get. And Drive also goes for the mutant hovel. I don't know why. I do not know why he called off the capture of that EMP control center and instead went for the mutant hovel. And he's producing mutants. Okay, I'm not... I'm not sure, but I guess Drive is just goofing, and now this multi-barracks play from Bike also feels like he's goofing, but he's gonna get the MCV. No, he went for the power plant. Oh, that was gonna be so many shots from these bikes impacting an MCV. And I guess both players are goofing around. I'm not, I'm not sure what this is. It's not a real build from Drive. There's not a real build where you go uh, mutant marauders and an MCV cell and you don't go for the EMP control center, but I guess it might work out. The mutant marauders are good versus rockets, so we'll see how they stack up against the cabals. We'll see how they stack up against the black disciples, but whatever the case may be, Drive has made his choice and we'll see how it plays out. It would be awesome to see the mutant marauders come through with the victory in a tournament game, especially versus Bike Rush Owns, but uh, I'm just, I'm not sure that we're going to see it. I love that Drive got mutant marauders. I just wish it was in a slightly different context. But uh, Drive and Bike Rush, they're both about to run out of cash. Their main bases are going to be running dry, and then it is going to be up to the long-distance harvesting for these players. Bike Rush Owns, of course, still has his MCV. Deploys a couple of Shredder turrets. And go into low power mode. Scorpion Tanks going for the crush. They don't have Dozer Blades. So they don't have that extra bonus armor or anything like that. Mutant Marauders and Buggies moving in for the cleanup. Even a Harvester or two mixed in from Drive to go for the crush. There is still a decent amount left over from Bike Rush Owns. And these Mutant Marauders are making short work of what they can of their opponent. Bike Rush Owns. If, man, if Drive had a little bit more gas in the tank, he actually could have taken this fight. But Bike Rush Owns has rockets in these buildings. There's no quick way to deal with those. That's, yeah, that's five rockets in these two buildings giving coverage to that conyard and no quick way to dislodge those units or to deal with this MCV. So it's like the mutant marauders can just get shredded by those shredder turrets and Drive just can't do anything about it quickly enough. 
Uh, I guess Drive could technically still pull out a victory from this game, but with so little income available to him, there really is uh, is not many options left for Drive. Bike could even sell off one of these War Factories. Uh, he doesn't need two War Factories when he's got such little income. And uh, I don't know, he might even sell off one of those refineries if he really gets desperate. But for the current moment, he's got Drive well contained. And unfortunately, not enough gas in the tank to fully run over Bike Rush in this game. I mean, he cleared out most of the army of Bike Rush. And there's the sell-off of the War Factory. So Drive, he can't actually sell the Mutant Hovel. So he was kind of stuck in that game. He goes to sell off his refinery and his War Factory. And he's like, oh, actually, I can't sell my last structure that's keeping me in the game. And that will do it for game number four. Bike Rush Owens gets himself into a match point position in this upper bracket semifinal. And that sends us to Tournament Undergrounds for game number five. We are no longer in mirror matchup territory. We are now back to regular old GDI versus Nod for game five of Drive versus Bike Rush Owns. Drive has put up a good fight. Not sure what happened on that last game. I'm not sure if he misclicked or he... Uh, just thought, you know what? I don't think I'm going to win this game with this double War Factory MCV cell all in. So I might as well go full goofball mode. I don't know if they were typing in the chat and talking back and forth from each other. But Drive has had a good showing this tournament. And he's had some good games versus Bike Rush Owns. So definitely nothing to be ashamed of there. And I guess going for one goofball game... It's not great in the best of seven. I mean, obviously, if he had fought that, if he had played that game a little bit more normally and been able to have taken that game instead of a 3-1 map score, we're now looking at a 2-2 map score and Drive is feeling really solid. But now we got a 3-1. We got a goofball game in the bag and we've got a hopefully more normal more straightforward game on Tournament Undergrounds. There is an EMP control center there, and there is a far out Tiberium spike there. So this is one of those maps where there are four Tiberium spikes. Two of them are very easy to capture, very safe and close to the base. And then two of the Tiberium spikes are very much risky to try and capture. And uh, all of this Tiberium, if only we could capture it all, and we could bring it back to our base. We would all be rich, but it just isn't possible. And unfortunately for these players, they will have to play with the more traditional expansions that are out on the map. More APC rockets. Uh, this time it's not a response to anything. Viper Jones does not see double war factory. Uh, he may suspect it, but his scouts are down there. Let's just confirm that. Microsoft's, yeah, he doesn't have vision of the natural expansion up there in the north. Instead, he can suspect that it is double war factory, but this is that uh, standard APC rocket. Often doesn't really do anything, and in this case, it will get jumped on by these bikes. We'll trade out a couple of bikes for it, and the harvesters, they might take some damage. If Drives lose a, loses a harvester to this, this will be very surprising. And Bike Shones is going to be able to put on some pressure. Drive takes a bit of damage across the Harvesters. He's going to be losing a couple of bikes as well. I think he should draft a Shredder Turret, but he might not. He might want to save his money. Okay, there's the Shredder Turret actually coming up now. A couple of more bikes will go down, and there that Pitbull falls. Suddenly, this attack doesn't have many rockets left in it. The buggies are coming in. Bike Rashones got what he wanted. He completely neutered the defenses or the attacking forces of Drive, forced him to play defensive, and as a result, Drive has no attacking units left on the map almost. He might even get this rocket squad as well, or get this bike as well. But no, the bike jukes to the other side of the war factory, and the rocket, the rocket goes down. The rocket is still alive. I'm not sure who's ever gonna win. <laughs> oh my gosh. If this one weekend rocket soldier. Okay, finally. He finally goes down. 
Anyways, this is also very annoying for Drive, this cluster of three power plants with two of them, like down below half health. Eventually, Drive will dislodge that. Behind all of this, Bike Rashones, he may not have gotten anything directly for that APC rocket combo that he sent out, but he is cooking fast in his natural expansion. He has got double refinery there. He has got lots of harvesters. His economy is soaring. Plus three and a half K, K plus four K per minute over drive. Just absolutely phenomenal there. Not a worry in the world for Bike Rush Owns. Drive on the other hand, he's gonna be playing super defensive. He may eventually get some bikes and some buggies out onto the other side of the map, but for now, Bike Rush Owns is actually just kind of like rekindling this Pitbull APC combo, and he's like, let's just go round two. It worked out quite nicely in my favor uh, in round one, and actually sells his original War Factory. So Drive, low on cash and very concerned about his future, he says, I don't need two build queues. I just need one build queue that is active ex all of the time, and you know, constantly has units pumping out. Harvesters don't get pulled in time. Fortunately, they are very close to the war factory. And in this case, Drive uh, doesn't even go for the repairs. He didn't take that much damage. And he's apparently not very worried about it. So he will just send that guy right back to work. Bike Rashones, on the other hand, going to be taking that blue Tiberium from the middle of the map. He says, it's mine. I deserve it. And, uh, well, he's going to once again use his army to secure that blue Tiberium. Feeling very reminiscent of that game number one, that Red Zone Odyssey game. And in this case, it's uh, oriented a little bit differently, but we have the same three bases. We have the same blue Tiberium uh, contested in the middle of the map. And yeah, it's, uh, it's just looking very similar to game number one. And we'll see if it works out in the favor of game number one or in the favor of game number two if Drive is able to claw back a victory. Although his start in this one was not as bad as his start in game number two. A couple of hammerheads show up. One of them gets cut down extremely quickly. At the same time, Bike Rashones does have a second attacking force in the north. He's going to force all of the harvesters off the line. He's going to force, I think, every single harvester to retreat. And Drive will respond with a big chunk of army. A couple of Harvesters do pull back. One Harvester very low on health, but no. Drive actually defends in the north, so he will give away the south. Instead of defending the south, he said, I'd rather keep my natural expansion and let my main base fall to the destruction of Bike Rush Owns. A couple of units going to be getting tagged with some damage. I think that's just infantry passing through the Tiberium. Behind all of this, Bike Rashones takes a third base. Not super aggressive in a suicidal sense. Bike Rashones is just playing this one out like very straightforward. Ken's Wrath just crashed, so we're going to be seeing if it does it again or if we can watch the end of this game. If we will be allowed to see how this one finishes out. Drive pushes away Bike Rush Owns in the natural and eventually at his old main base. But once again, Drive's third base is so far behind that of Bike Rush Owns. And yes, Drive did drive away the forces of Bike Rush at his natural expansion and, they, and thereby preserve his economy. It did not cost nothing. Although, Bike Rush Owns giving away a couple of hammerheads here might help even that up. Hammerheads are not the end of the world for uh, Bike Rush Owns to lose, but it is a bit of a nice win for Drive to have one less thing to worry about. Not a lot of sniper teams on the front line here unless they're inside of those APCs, but Bike Rush Owns still finds a way to chip away at the infantry army of Drive, reducing it down time and time again, and always on the Drive side of the map. He is not fighting with his back against the wall. Bike Rush Owns is out on the Drive side of the map, so if Drive counterattacks, Bike Rush Owns has so much time to prepare and respond. Bike Rush Owns has so much opportunity to just whittle away that army and cut it down before it ever shows up knocking on his front door. Drive, now with his MCV on the high ground, will be able to take that third base. But once again, Bike Rush Owns with a 6k per minute income advantage over Drive. Bike Rush Owns, 
I assume researching railguns, his tier three is now up. He should have a Marv on the way very soon if he does not already. And he does not. He doesn't have a Marv on the way. So, okay, well, Reclamator Hub <laughs> coming up right as I say, he doesn't have a Marv on the way. But uh, I was right in the sense that he would have it soon. Drive. I do not know how many how he punched out so much infantry. He has an absolutely insane amount of rocket squads, probably 30 rocket squads in total over the spread out over this map. I guess they're not spread out. I guess they're all just right here and he's producing even more. And uh, might as well just sell off this barracks. He's not producing anything from it. He pulled all of the units away from it, but like, yeah. I hope he doesn't sell it off now. I'm not sure if you need three hands of Nod. Maybe he does. He's only producing from two, so it seems like he could have just sold off that one and uh, and called it quits. No Juggernauts on the front line just yet. Sniper teams are Pred APC, Marv on the back foot, and Hammerheads to support. It is Tib and Fuse, Infantry, Bike, Buggy. Not a lot of upgrades on the side of Drive for the vehicles, but his infantry are looking powerful. He's got the Confessor Cabals. He's got that Tib Infusion, and he has got a ton of rockets. One Juggernaut makes its way to the front line and drive is going to need to shut this attack down bike rush owns is hoping to dr to draw this attack out as long as possible uses watchtowers uses hammerheads uses juggernauts to once again whittle away the army of drive four five six rocket squads maybe going down as drive pulls away from this front line and drive has done nothing to dislodge bike rush owns on the front line so bike rush owns is going to be a problem for drive to deal with. Bike Rashones marches his way forward as MCV inching away from the space, the no man's land in between the two bases. Drive sends forward a couple of units, but it's just a couple of rocket, it's a couple of buggies and bikes. They just get vaporized by the forces of Bike Rush Owns, and two hammerheads will go down. But behind all of that, Bike Rush Owns continues to chip away and bleed dry the army of Drive. Drive's defense has failed him, and now he has a Marv on the front lines that he has to deal with, and a base that he cannot dislodge, and a G that will be coming out momentarily here from Drive. The army has given up and Drive will keep his hopes alive in the lower bracket. But here in the upper bracket, it's Bike Rush Owns who advances on to the upper bracket finals. Let's jump into the other semifinal to see who will be meeting Bike Rush in that last stage of the autumn dual upper bracket. And that takes us back to Tournament Odyssey Red Zone for game one of our second upper bracket semifinal best of seven. Kicking it off as the Cyan Black Hand in the north. This is Futurama. And in the south, playing the purple Scrin. This is Rex. I have to say, for a tournament, having a top four be Drive, Bike Rush, Futurama, and Rex, that is a very promising top four. I mean, yeah, there's some other folks who could probably do an equally good job. Phoenix, if he's looking good, Masterleaf, Senna, probably some other folks that I'm not mentioning, but this is a fantastic top four, and I don't think anyone can deny over the last couple of years these four players have all had really good showings. Maybe Rex is the odd one out, since he is a little bit more of a recent player to uh, at least the games that I see and that I watch. I'm sure he was playing Kane's Wrath just in venues that I was not aware of uh, before 20-whatever when he moved to Canada. But, uh, you know, we get to see him now, and I don't think he has made too many tournament finals uh, he hasn't won any tournaments as far as I'm aware, but maybe Autumn Duel will be his chance to shine. We have, of course, seen him play very well in test games, in show matches, in other events, but not necessarily go all the way and get that win. However, Futurama is someone that we have seen go all the way, get the gold, beat Bike Rush in a tournament setting. Although, to my knowledge, that has only happened a couple of times, maybe once or twice. Drive and Futurama, they both have that badge earned a couple of times, just uh, not necessarily very often. Rex, on the other hand, if he beats Futurama here, 
He then goes up against Bike Rush Owns in the upper bracket final. But of course, this is a double elimination event. So if Bike Rush gets knocked down once, you may have to fight him a second time in the grand final. In this case, it is going to be Futurama going for a couple of flame tanks. Not sure that he's going to be able to get anything done with these. Always love seeing the flame tank attempt, but it does feel so rare that we see them do significant damage. They usually get a little bit done, especially going up against a black hand player where they tend to build three, four, or five over the course of a game. One of them usually sneaks through and gets a bit of damage done anywhere from a power plant to tier three and a refinery. And in this case, about half of the health of the War Factory, not much more than that. Vanilla Scrin, no Traveler 59 for Rex here in game number one. So he is going to be just busting out that regular old Scrin. And in this case, you know, he'll be holding off this bike buggy, mostly with Seeker tanks. Maybe we see a couple of Descents and Gunwalkers added into the mix. But the Black Hand Squad from Futurama does manage to kill off the portal, meaning no Descents in the immediate future. And this War Factory will be getting targeted down. The rest of its health bar will be depleted by that and that's the gg okay so rex was not feeling good after that war factory loss and the pressure was certainly going to be keeping up from futurama so maybe rex finds a way out of that one but that was going to be a very difficult opening for rex to bounce back from and that's a wonderful case of rex having uh, 23k total resources gathered and Futurama about 10k less than that. And yet it just didn't matter. Futurama got the damage done that mattered most and that'll catapult us into game number two. And that sends us on to the desolate pipeline problems where we have at least one crane opener here in the north from our black hand player Futurama and in the south Featuring once again the purple screen, we have another crane opener, this time courtesy of Rex. Not too much of a surprise, it is pipeline problems after all. Engineer is going for the Tib Spike, Engineer going for the Tib Spike. It's a mirror matchup in their builds, but not in their faction choice. Their timings are extremely similar as well their engineers their refineries their cranes everything is as mirrored as it can be between these two players without it actually being a mirror matchup an aggressive game number one from futurama and that is the flame tank rush that ends the game one out of a hundred times or something like that futurama he needed those like three flame tanks number one and number two not enough number three is the one that sealed the fate of rex and that is the one that keeps the hope alive for all of the other flame tank rushes that don't do quite so much the flame tank rushes that fizzle out without ending the game or doing that critical damage nerve center is up so instead of you know going for an additional refinery or something he'd already gotten a really good refinery position but instead of going for a refinery over here at the green field he goes for a nerve center on the other side, Futurama goes for his main base refinery. He's got his blue Tiberium refinery in a good spot, and he goes for a war factory back at home instead of over at the blue field like Futurama did. So some slight differences between these two players after their very economy-focused openers. And the fact that Futurama is staying pretty close to the economy of Rex, you know, Rex is leading... 18k total resources gathered he hit that 18k a little bit before futurama but like futurama is just right there the fact that futurama is just right there against a screen player is pretty remarkable a lot of times you do see the screen players uh gaining a pretty significant advantage that was a pretty good buzzer swarm support power uh in the early stages of the game you're not necessarily getting those huge killer snipes with that buzzer swarm support power so the fact that he cleaned up all of the rocket squads is pretty good i wasn't actually doing the math on whether or not that was necessarily worth it but cutting down those rocket squad numbers can make the next stage of the game much easier to deal with 
and especially because he got him before the black disciple upgrade where those buzzer swarm those buzzer squads would have been cleaned up a lot more quickly second war factory or yeah second war factory i was like is this third war factory but no it is just second war factory from rex at his third base location this is kind of a weird setup for this map because you've got that blue tiberium field accessible right at the beginning that's kind of your natural expansion but that's often where you harvest from first because it is blue tiberium because it is double income for these players but We'll see how this turns out with the... Oh, okay, that was deployed for pretty much as little time as humanly possible. That MCV is not moving forward, so maybe that was a misclick. I'm actually not sure now. Flame tank comes in. I don't think this flame tank will end the game here for Futurama. Uh, Rex is a little bit too well prepared. Futurama is not going to get another easy win with just a couple of flame tanks. He might do some damage with these three flame tanks, but considering the blue Tiberium has already powered up the third base of Rex there on the right side of the map, I don't think these uh, the damage from these flame tanks. He might actually get the tier three. Rex is not paying attention at all to this flame tank. So the stasis chamber and the tier three will both be going down here. And this flame tank might actually get ranked up to full heroic status. He's gonna go for a power plant as well. And oh man, two upgraded power plants as well as the tier three. The stasis chamber kill isn't the end of the world and it's gonna be the mastermind that captures this flame tank. And there's another flame tank on the left side of the map, I think. Okay, no, the dev tank, I guess, dealt with that. And finally, the mastermind captures that flame tank. That flame tank did so much damage. No, the flame tank got sent down the right side of the map. But uh, the tripod did most of the damage there. Wow, I cannot believe how much damage Futurama got done with that flame tank. And that has bought him a huge amount of time that has completely disrupted the build of Rex. Rex is going to rebuild that stasis. He needs that stasis shield support power, but that just buys so much time for Futurama. I'm actually surprised we don't have a Reclamator, a Redeemer Engineering Facility on the map. I'm really surprised that we don't have a rush towards the Epic unit for Futurama. It is quite powerful on this map. Having that Rage Gen is very nice for the late game Nod army. In this case, it is going to be a phased tripod to try and buy some time. A couple of phased gunwalkers as well to go for the crush. Try and buy some time for this army. And that's where having an uncrushable unit can be very nice to help body block. In this case, a, a decent number of rocket squads are going to be getting crushed. And this double vet flame tank will eventually be cleaned up by Futurama, I assume. Well, the Futurama might be able to just get the kill on this mastermind. No! Rex gets the cap on that MCV, sells it off immediately. That does return the flame tank to the control of Futurama, but that is uh, a small price to pay for getting that MCV, for shutting down this base push and taking the wind out of Futurama sails. However, the phase has ended, which means Futurama can finally kill these units and get straight to killing off this army of Rex. Flame tank in the back door. Great move there by Futurama. I guess Futurama is the one who gives everyone else's flame tanks hope. Everyone hopes that their flame tanks can be like Futurama's flame tanks. And now this drone ship. Yeah, that wasn't actually that much of an army in front of the drone ship. It's just that Futurama's army was running away from those phased units. So I'm not sure. Oh my gosh, that flame tank gets captured by the mastermind. A fully heroic flame tank of Futurama. Even better than the double vet flame tank of Futurama from earlier in this game. There's the stasis locking down a huge chunk of those beam cannons. But it doesn't stop this captured tripod from keeping the front line moving forward. That tripod goes to the control of Rex for just a moment before that mastermind gets deleted. And Futurama gets a second win. Second win and a second wind here on Pipeline Problems. That game changing hands a couple of times, but Rex, he vastly overestimated how much he was going to be able to get done with that phase. I think he really needed to buy some more time considering how much Futurama was able to do with that flame tank that burned its way through the main base. And Rex was like, hey, don't worry, I got the phase. I got like four units, but I got the phase and I'll be able to take down this army. 
And uh, yeah, he got the MCV, but that was far too aggressive of, of a position from Rex and Futurama just took the game back from there. The Walrus Man is back and we are back on Tiki Turmoil for game number three. Ready to mix things up into the faction of Nod, but still playing purple. This is Rex down 0-2 and hoping to mount the comeback against this guy in the south plain cyan sticking with black hand this is futurama why change what is working futurama is happy to play black hand verse screen futurama is happy to play black hand verse nod so this is kind of interesting. We have not seen a dedicated black hand player in quite some time. We've seen some very dedicated GDI players over the course of the last couple of years, but black hand has been more of something that you bust out every once in a while that you bring in for a flashy showcase in one or two games or maybe map dependent faction choice of your opponent, something like that. You bust out black hand, but uh, not necessarily verse you know anything and everything that your opponent does and in this case Futurama is sticking with it here on Tiki Turmoil we'll see if he keeps up the win streak if he gets himself a three and zero score versus Rex or if Rex can start the comeback can start the uh the you know put a point on the board to at least start the comeback we'll see I do appreciate that Rex is, you know, not sticking with Scrin if he feels like it's not working in the past. We have seen Rex do best with Scrin and Scrin sub factions. I was kind of expecting Rex to switch up to Traveler 59, try and play more cultist style. But he says, no, you know what? I'm going a little bit more vanilla. I'm, uh, I'm heading back to the days of just GDI and Nod before those alien invasions and hoping that my nod skills will carry me through. Futurama, on the other hand, is of course looking super strong so far to get his matchup versus bike in the finals, but it's only game three of a best of seven. Rex still has some strength left in him. And we'll see if some early game aggression can net Futurama a win. We'll see if some flame tanks end up being the thing that save Futurama here in game number three, like they have in game one and game two. I cannot believe how much Futurama has gotten done with flame tanks in those couple of games. So often we see flame tanks get utilized, get some good kills, but then the game will still be lost for the black hand player. Uh, but I can't believe two games in a row, flame tanks were the difference maker. They were the winner of those games no doubt about it so far futurama and rex they are staying pretty close to lockstep with each other they're playing slightly different versions of the same game a couple of bikes coming in here for rex but with rocket squads and bikes of his own i don't think futurama will be taking any damage from this and rex doesn't think so either because he starts attacking the tib spike attacking a tib spike with bikes is not something you do when you think the bikes could be better served doing basically anything else. And uh, as you can see, Rex doesn't even think that, so he's not actually attacking that tip spike. That was just a random pass at the tip spike. A couple of Scorpion tanks coming out from Rex, and if Futurama chooses to go into Scorpion tanks, that feels pretty good for Rex because Rex's Scorpion tanks get better upgrades than Futurama's Scorpion tanks, so... That's always going to be good for Rex the longer it goes on. Futurama is going to be stealing some of that Blue Tiberium, but the Tiki Turmoil, both players have a bit of Blue Tiberium that they can harvest from quite easily. And a couple of bikes going down in the middle of the map for Rex. Scorpion Tank gets eaten up on the north side of that Tib Spike, and uh, Rex is going to get the crush on a couple of these rocket squads. He trades out one Scorpion for it, which may or may not be worth it as these bikes swing in for Futurama and nab themselves a second Scorpion Tank, maybe even get a third or fourth Scorpion Tank. And that Blue Tiberium Harvester full of cash. Rex would have loved to kill it, but he doesn't get the kill. And instead, Futurama feels like he is dominating everywhere. 
Okay, he's gonna lose a couple of rocket squads here in the middle of the map, but again, he's trading them out for a couple of scorpions. So while you're killing a tip spike, this just feels good for Futurama. Rex is maybe a little bit faster with that MCV positioning on the third base, but I'm not even sure that Rex is really going to be taking that third base right in this moment. He could be going for uh, additional tech before he gets that third base refinery up and running. Futurama gets the kill on the Northern Tib Spike. Futurama protects his own Southern Tiberium Spike. And instead of taking his own third base, he says, hey, that third base of Rex looks mighty tasty. Rex actually goes. Wow. I have not, I don't even remember the last time I saw a player go for a third base before going for tech. And in this case, this was a very... I won't say very big misstep, but this was certainly a misstep by Rex. I mean, he could tap out right here. Uh, I'm not sure what the plan is for Rex. I don't know why he didn't have more forces nearby. You don't have to have your whole army in your in your third refiner in your third field, but like, I'm surprised he did not have more armies standing by to uh, to go with this expansion, and he's paying the price for that right now. The refinery gets shut down. A couple of scorpion tanks on the other side of the map. They get eaten up as well. I don't know what Rex has going for him. Uh, his MCB is going to get burned down. He did get... He's got his operation center. He got his tier 3 out. Okay, that's what he got going for him. Hoo boy! This is not Rex's series. Uh, Futurama, he can... He can still lose this one. But man, if Futurama goes up 3-0 versus Rex... Ooh, gets the... Get the... No, he doesn't get the Conyard. There was a moment there where maybe Rex was going to be able to get that Conyard, and that would have been phenomenal. But it just, uh, it does not happen. Laser Capacitor is about halfway done. I have to assume that is what Rex is going for. He's rebuilt his MCV, so the Redeemer Engineering Facility, it's back on the menu for Rex. He has that opportunity. Futurama's Redeemer finishes up. He's got a really good window to go for a kill on Rex. Rex long distance harvesting from the third base of Futurama. I love that Futurama is not super interested in a third base. He's more interested in a base push that ends the game. Futurama, he can defend back with some rockets, with some obelisks. Those laser capacitors not being done means that those scorpion tanks just are not very scary. And by the time they get laser capacitors, well, there's not going to be many of them left to do much damage with anyways. Rage Gen fires off. Doesn't seem to have too much of an effect. Everyone has already been given their attack commands, so there wasn't that much to worry about. Rex's obelisk will go down. His uh, his shredder turrets are a nice attempt here, but in the face of everything else, he's got a redeemer to deal with. He's got obelisks to deal with. Rex is just not super happy with how this game is going. Rocket squads are being pushed to the front line, and the GG comes out as Rex has been defeated. And okay, Futurama is primed to take this second semifinal 4-0 and rocket himself into the winner's bracket finals versus Bike Rush Owns. Rex has one final chance to stop him. And the comeback absolutely has to start right here in game number four, right here on the map, Tiberium Rift in the north. Once again, choosing Nod, uh, this is Rex. And in the south, feeling fantastic with Black Hand, and so he has chosen to stay with it. This is Futurama. He's got that Black Hand love, and he is loving his Black Hand because this is 3-0 with Black Hand against Skrin, against Nod. No worries for Futurama. And Rex, the standard macro style, has not been working with Skrin. Those flame tanks have been getting in. They've been doing way too much damage. And now the ultra greed of a third base without tech, without much of an army, that didn't work out. Futurama caught Rex with his pants down, really. And uh, it did not work out there in game number three for Rex. But I think a straightforward macro oriented two base kind of play that can work out for rex 
here on Tiberium Rift. Futurama, he has gotten some some phenomenal damage with flame tanks and Tiberium Rift is another map where flame tanks can be absolutely massive. They can slip around the edges. There's lots of space to maneuver. There's little pockets where you can eke along the north side of the map. You can eke along the south side of the map. You can draw a path through the middle, making use of the opening in that rift. You can, you know, sneak through the middle while you're while you're attacking. So Futurama, his flame tanks may still find a way to bring victory here in game number four. But of course, we're all hoping for Rex to mount the comeback, at least take us to game seven, baby. Even if Rex doesn't end up winning at all, if he takes us to game seven, I will be very happy about that. And Futurama, you know, I don't have anything against the guy. I don't necessarily want him to win or to lose, but I don't want him to get a 4-0. <laughs> Just from a pure observer perspective, I don't want him to get a 4-0. Drive was not able to take get Bike Rush to game number seven in the first semifinal. Hopefully, Rex is able to take Futurama to game seven here in the second semifinal. And even if he doesn't, even if Rex gets 4 0 here, well, his tournament life is not over, and he will have a chance to come back and to, uh, you know, get a victory, get a win in the lower bracket. Of course, both of these players, they've already made it through the group stage. They've already proved themselves in the early parts of the playoff. And, uh, well, the result is Rex is not looking too hot, but Futurama is looking fantastic. Bike Buggy skirmishes in the first part of this game. Rex has gone double War Factory, but he keeps his MCV. It is poised for a natural expansion. He's got maybe a couple of wins here. Futurama, though, he went for that third refinery. He went for a more normal second War Factory timing. He's got it at the natural expansion instead of back home in his main base. Rex, I have to assume, is going to go for a third refinery. He's gone for the aggression. He hasn't gotten a huge win. He didn't find some super greedy Futurama going four refineries before that second war factory, not scouting or anything like that. But Futurama is going to go a relatively quick fourth refinery compared to Rex. Futurama is going to have that income advantage those extra harvesters over Rex, but Rex can rectify that quite quickly. Rex can make up that difference between the two players quite easily with a couple of extra harvesters and with prioritizing that fourth refinery. Unfortunately, this harvester is uh, working for the other team, apparently. For whatever reason, that harvester was going for a very long distance refining route Fortunately, Rex did manually fix that. You saw him control that harvester, get it back online. As a result, Rex did for a moment have some low power problems. He just needs to crank out a couple of power plants and then he can move his MCV safely. Once again, a little bit of a tussle between the bike buggy of these two players. Rex and Futurama trading back and forth those bikes between them. And the result is... Rex has caught up on the economy front by comparison, and neither player has really taken too much damage. Secret Shrine is now out. Black Disciples on the way. Additional Hand of Nod, and it could be into a Tier 3 after that. I guess he has to get the Operations Center first, so... We do have the Ops Center coming up for both players and I should expect Tier 3 to be the choice after that. No super fast third base for Rex. He is at least getting his tech up at a normal timing, and this is, well, more what I wanted to see. Doesn't mean we won't still have a sneaky flame tank making its way out onto the map at some point, but for the current moment, it is looking extremely normal from both players double war factory pumping out those scorpion tanks there's going to be the tier three starts up laser capacitors immediately i mean i guess he could be going for tib core but i have to assume with the sheer number of scorpion tanks out on the map from mr rex that it is going to be laser capacitors man spam is good and man spam can destroy laser capacitor scorpions but uh, I was going to say it's going to be a Redeemer Engineering facility, but 
Uh, we may have to wait for that a couple of moments longer. I'm not sure what Futurama has planned. I assumed he sold off that war factory because he had the Redeemer Engineer facility ready, but no, he, uh, he did something else. He is going purifiers, so he does have that going for him. Oh, he has an MCV in the middle of the map. That's what he was going for. He needed to defend his second MCV, which we saw pop out a little while ago. And uh, the result is Futurama will have to delay his Redeemer Engineering facility just a little bit. Futurama wants to go for the third base of Rex. He doesn't want Rex to get that out without having to fight for it. And Rex sells off his operations center. So he is wanting as much cash on hand as possible. He knows he has to fight Futurama here in the south or he has to turn tail and get on out of there. But he thinks his laser capacitors will be able to open up an opportunity as he heads in the north. He goes for an attack in the north and we'll see if he manages to get anything done with it. He is going to be able to catch a couple of this bike, a couple of these bikes and buggies. He catches this force kind of as it gets sent back to respond to the aggression from Rex. Meanwhile, Futurama, he's got the obelisk. He's got the infantry numbers. And, uh, well, he doesn't necessarily have them in the right spot. He is going to potentially lose his main base. His tech may also be under threat with all of these laser capacitors. You kind of have to go for the tech. You can pop those obelisks pretty darn quickly. The obelisk behind the laser fenced tier three is going to be a bit hard of a target to crack. And I love that Rex goes for these upgraded power plants. Those are the faster kill, and it means he takes less damage from that obelisk even takes the obelisk down and forces the sell off of that tier three this is sort of the perfect move by rex he gets a lot of damage he doesn't take a ton of damage on these scorpions and at the same time he has his own redeemer on the way he has his own redeemer finishing up and that will help him hold off that attack back on his third base Futurama just loses so much to these Scorpion tanks. He wastes a lot of time with his army trying to run them down, trying to find them and kill them off. And the result is Futurama's army is not pushing the front line further forward. His army is not out here supporting his MCV. Futurama is just going to be losing this very forward base. The MCV will go down. That second MCV, that multi-MCV play will not be working out for Futurama. His attack in the north will be getting shut down by these reinforcement scorpion tanks. That works out so well for Rex. He never sold off that second war factory in the north. And the result is those scorpion tanks popping out will defend that base. Rage Gen fires off, kills a purifier. And those rocket squads are not pointed at Rex. They're pointed at Futurama's own forces. Rex has turned this game number four completely on its head and he has given himself a real fighting chance in this series Futurama is coming for revenge coming for blood he's like you've gutted my base but I still have a lot of rockets tearing down your base this is going to be the end of the MCV, but it won't be the end of Rex in this game. The body block comes in with that power plant, but it's just not enough. But the crush is magnificent. Those scorpions get untold amounts of value, crushing all of the rockets that were there defending for Futurama. And the Redeemer, the Double Flame Redeemer, is going to make short work of everything else. Rex has crushed Futurama on the front line, and Futurama may still have some gas in the tank, but it is not much compared to Rex. I mean, if Futurama still had his tech, his production, maybe even if Futurama still had a Redeemer, but guess what? He never built that Redeemer. He never went that far down the tech tree, and he's paying the price for it now. He has got a ton of firepower aimed in his direction, and he has got virtually no answer for it. Killing off that MCV is nice, but when a guy has two war factories, you can rebuild that MCV without waiting for anything. Rex comes alive here in game number four. No flame tanks to cut him off. Just good old-fashioned nod firepower, and that will be the win. Rex comes alive with an actual point on the board. 
Futurama does not mount the comeback. Futurama does not get a sneaky 4-0 victory. Rex puts a point on the board. And let's see if he can keep up the momentum in game number five. And for the second time in the semifinals, we get to see Small Town USA. And for the first time in this semifinals, we get to see ourselves a mirror matchup. That's right. Rex has decided to forego Nod Vanilla, forego Scrin, and instead has joined his brother Futurama in plain black hand. So we have a black hand mirror on Small Town USA, which just seems like a recipe for the game to get weird and chaotic and quite flamey as well. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll just be a straightforward macro game. They will both choose a different expansion to take and it will, you know, look kind of normal. Scorpion tanks avatars maybe redeemers maybe other stuff i almost said stealth tanks and then i was like well i guess not stealth tanks friends they are black hand and we do have a nod matchup with no stealth in play which you know considering how much stealth typically plays in a nod matchup we've got one with none at all these guys might as well be playing gdi for how much they can see each other but rex he got wrecked by the early game flame stuff by the flame tank plays of futurama and on small town usa well i'm not necessarily saying that flame tanks are going to win the day but uh they can burn through a base very quickly compact little map not a lot of distance not a lot of space if the flame tank gets in there for either side could do big big damage and that could be the end of the game. We see Futurama making a distinct choice. Is this a flame tank? Is he going flames? That's a harvester. Okay, well, look, I can't see the future. I try, but I can't see the future. Would have been great if a flame tank popped out right then. Uh, and Rex is matching it. Futurama actually does redeploy his MCV, gets his own operations center. He can not upgrade some of those power plants. He can go for dozer blades if he should so choose. Uh, could also go quad turrets. You know, if he wants to go scorpion tanks, he could go for those dozer blades. But he has also confirmed the direction of the MCV of Rex. And this is the decision point for Futurama. He says, do I drive down to the southern corner do I go for the contested field or do I okay I guess he's going to three so he hasn't lost a ton of time it would be a little bit of an awkward pivot to go over to that left side expansion now but uh when he's got tier three it does make it a little bit more worth it uh we'll just see I don't know what Rex has planned he has spotted the flame tank if he didn't spot it just directly, then he at least has the vision to spot it. And Futurama says, okay, we'll wait. We'll play this one out a little bit slower. I don't need to get a flame tank victory right in the first three minutes. I mean, the other flame tank showed up at like seven minutes. Okay, that's just a scouting bike. Whew. The other flame tank in uh, on Pipeline Problems showed up at seven minutes, and that's the one that really won the game. The first one just set the stage for uh, Futurama to take that game, and then rex kind of recovered and then the second flame tank came in and really took out anything that rex had left over so just because the flame tank doesn't win the game in the first five minutes doesn't mean it won't win the game but uh this flame tank well it's gonna have a laser fence to deal with it doesn't have purifying flame so i think the scorpion tank will be able to shut it down but he might still he may still get the second war factory yeah it's not the end of the world very close there, but the flame tank gets the kill. The war factory gets shut down. The production does not escalate for Rex. He does have that refinery though. So he does have that income advantage. Now that the main bases are dried up, he is going to have a significant income advantage as Futurama gets converted into long distance harvesting. But Futurama went for that tier three. Futurama went for the multi MCV play so that he could place down those obelisks, have them building while the MCV is on the move. 
and rex is really focused on this defense oh i love the secret shrine drop in front of the obelisk completely stops those scorpions from being able to jump on the obelisk and attack it immediately a flame tank on the left side of the map for futurama could be absolutely devastating as he decides to take his obelisk talents down to the southern part of the map futurama has rex's attention entirely focused here in the bottom right hand corner of the map so a flame tank somewhere else could be phenomenal for futurama futurama keeps the front line moving forward big infantry push of course with those cabals he's got those black disciples as well so every building that gets sold off is a fresh potential flame unit onto the front line for Futurama, a huge win for him. And Rex has just about given up on this bottom right-hand corner of the map. Rex is pretty much out of cash. And now that he's about to lose this or expansion, he is going to be out of options as well. His harvesters are still working away and he's got the long distance mining from the north side of the map. So Rex is not completely out of this, but his build radius is now extremely small. This obelisk is not gonna last very long and the harvesters getting some crushes is nice, but that is not a game winning move. That is a game delaying move. And you better have a winning chip after that. In this case, the winning strat is Redeemer. The Redeemer has risen. Sell off the engineering facility, yep. And he gets the flame unit into that Redeemer immediately. So, hope does still live for Rex. Long distance harvesting is not great, but it's what Futurama has been doing for the last couple of minutes in this game. So it is certainly not the end of the world. I was really hoping that was a Rex flame tank moving into the base of Futurama. I was like, oh my gosh, Futurama's going to lose his tech back at home. But it's just a scouting buggy. It's just a scouting buggy. And Futurama will not have the backstab of a lifetime to worry about. So Rex, you know, he's got this redeemer. That is his killer play. We'll see if it works out. Rex has also rebuilt his MCV, so he is not down and out. He's got a double MCV to work with. He's uh, he's doing okay. He just doesn't have much of an economy, and we'll see if he's able to really challenge Futurama. Futurama has uh, not entirely abandoned this section of the map, but he doesn't have much that can deal with a Flame Engineer Redeemer and Obelisk drops from his opponent. Uh, although this Redeemer is currently just spinning in a circle, taking massive damage, I thought uh, I thought that Redeemer was going to be burning down those Obelisks a lot more quickly. But instead, that Redeemer just took a lot of damage and burned down the Obelisks very slowly. Very slow Obelisk death for Futurama. Futurama on the north side of the map is hoping to take over this field. It is going to stretch this game out a little bit longer. Futurama's hoping to leech away as much of this cash as he can. And finally, there's that Redeemer killing off this base that we expected to see. And uh, <laughs> Temple of Nod also tried to cause some problems there. The decoy Temple of Nod from Futurama. A funny little play. Not really going to be doing anything there. Does maybe delay that Redeemer by like one second, but not significant in the grand scheme of things. That War Factory! Wow! That's, that's very frustrating for Rex. Futurama is making this a, just every step, an absolute bloody fight for Rex. This was not an easy, cheap, quick cleanup. He's gonna try and go for the Redeemer kill as well. He's got the charge particle beams. Oh my gosh, he gets it! No! Rex, no! Oh my gosh. And Futurama's got the Black Hand Squad as well. Holy heroic Black Hand Squad. He doesn't have Purifying Flame, but he still gets the Refinery. Oh, Futurama. He couldn't let him have anything. He won't let Rex have anything. And Rex just is like, okay, I guess I go home now because there's a Redeemer right there and the Redeemer can get a shot on the MCV. It doesn't matter. Wow, that was brutal. Rex gets totally gutted and dismantled in that game number five.
Oh, that was not a good showing for Rex. That was a cutthroat game for Futurama. That was just, he made Rex pay for every inch with blood and then he burned Rex down regardless. Oh man, that was a good game from Futurama. That was, <laughs> that was total destruction. Domination by Futurama. And that will do it for this game, for this series. Futurama advances to face Bike Rush, which brings us back to what I feel is now a classic map. This is Tournament Odyssey Red Zone for the third time in this event. In the north, playing the Cyan, playing the GDI. This is Futurama. And playing in the south, the Red Steel Talons. This is Bike Rush Owns. Bike Rush beats Drive, Futurama beats Rex. Knocks them both down to the lower bracket, and uh, they will have to duke it out. I believe Drive up against Shock Trepid, Rex up against Masterleaf. We'll go over those results once we drop down to the lower bracket final. At the conclusion of this series, the loser of this goes up against the lower bracket finalist coming in from the lower bracket. GDI versus Steel Talons. Not a matchup we see a lot. And one of those ones where it's like, wait, <laughs> Futurama choose Steel Talons or was he just playing random? And uh, we just ended up in this GDI versus Steel Talons because if he chose Steel Talons, hopefully that means he has something specific that he wants to do. Some reason he is busting out Steel Talons on this map. And I'm excited to see what he's got cooking because if it's just oh i don't know i guess i'll just play steel talons versus bike rushes gdi i'm mixing up these factions uh everything that i said just in the reverse bike rush owns is the steel talons player anyways if he just chose steel talons just like oh, i don't know i'll just play it for whatever reason then uh you know it could just be a very normal looking game, but hopefully he chose Steel Talons because he's got something very specific in mind. And uh, well, we might be seeing the beginning of that right here, right now. MRT's out on the map. Are we going into a command post as well? There's nothing queued up on... Okay, he sells off the barracks. Well, I don't think we get to see flying MRT's today. If he, if he is, he's only going with like three of them with rockets, which doesn't seem like enough. I feel like you want five with rockets. I thought I saw a rifleman jumping into one of these MRTs. I might be wrong, but uh, you know, not a bad idea to have a single rifleman inside of the MRTs just to amp up your anti-infantry capabilities. And yeah, there we go. So the MRTs are going on the harassment path. They're looking for a bit of damage and bike rush owns We'll see if he does anything else that is uh, uniquely Steel Talons because APC Rocket is a very common combination for early game GDI. Even if it doesn't necessarily do a lot, it's a very common combination. However, the MRTs, they have that repair factor, which with the right control can make them that much more powerful and uh, that much more difficult to deal with. I feel like this is not necessarily a tremendous amount of damage, one or two pit bulls is definitely nice for bike rush owns if he gets a couple of kills bleeds off a couple of riflemen from the uh or a couple of rockets from futurama as well that's also nice and foreseeing four three watchtowers yeah three watchtowers so the pit bulls not a big deal you typically want pit bulls in a gdi match regardless so i feel like having a couple of extra pit bulls not a big deal Forcing out three or four watchtowers, that is definitely nice. Forcing out the extra rocket squads, which Futurama probably was not going to build. But now that Futurama's got the armory, he guess he's going to make the best of this situation. Mind drop could be coming in. Nope. Pulls away. Another watchtower forced out from Futurama. So, is it game ending damage no but it is bike rush owns doing that bit of forced or perhaps forcing some errors out of futurama forcing futurama to play a little bit in a way that he doesn't necessarily want to play 
Futurama, he's now got that second war factory. Titans are rocking up and Futurama does not have Predator tanks out to deal with them. So it is gonna be up to these rocket squads. One Predator tank is now out, but there's already two. Oh, one of these riflemen actually went fully heroic inside of that MRT as well. So he's racked up a lot of kills. And the Predator tank narrowly avoiding the crush, trying desperately to get a kill on these units. Futurama will eventually push Bike Rush Owns away. The nice thing for Bike Rush Owns is he was able to once again steal that blue Tiberium behind this attack. His economy got up a little bit faster. He kept the pressure on Futurama and he's gone for Orcas behind this. So it feels like every stage of this attack has been almost distract Futurama, keep Futurama not playing optimally, and the result has been plus two or plus three K per minute for Bike Rush owns. Some heroic units, and now the real damage comes in. Orcas swinging in and punching down these harvesters. A couple of rockets are nice, but that is three dead harvesters at your natural expansion, and Futurama has a lot of firepower that he has to deal with. Behind this, Bike Rush owns. He's eaten up his natural expansion. He's eaten up the Blue Tiberium, and he has expanded to the high ground. He is ready to go with a third base after all of this. His income is in a fantastic place. He's even deployed a crane <laughs> of all things. Not what you really expect to see, but in this case, you do get to see it. A crane at the six minute mark from Bike Rush owns, and he steals another load of Blue Tiberium from the middle of the map. Would have been even better if he had grabbed an engineer and captured that defensive tower to get a couple of shots on this army at its, as, as it's moving across the map. And look at this from Futurama. The smell of desperation is in the air. The Orcas will tag, get tagged with some damage. One of them extremely low on health. My gosh, how does Bike Rush Owns do this? How many times do we have to watch Bike Rush Owns' units retreat from the front line with like 1% or less of their health bar left and the opponent opponent didn't do anything wrong he just doesn't get the kill and this fully heroic rifleman squad has survived ap ammo is done for bike rush owns harvester leading the charge i think accidentally that harvester looked like he was heading for the blue tiberium again in the middle of the map but with four watchtowers absorbing a lot of damage futurama is bleeding out units without doing any of that critical damage railguns have finished up so if bike rush can deal with the rocket army if he can deal with the infantry hordes of Futurama, the firepower will be unmatched and Futurama doesn't see a way forward. Bike Rush's economy was phenomenal and his defense was solid. Futurama was held captive by the distracting forces of Bike Rush Owns and then Bike Rush Owns while expanding, hit him with a one-two punch. Futurama went into a death spiral and that crashed into a solid wall of defense from bike that will do it for game number one futurama is going to need to bring a superpower to game number two and this is the abandoned subway for which this map is named here in the middle of the desert once again we are graced with a Steel Talons versus GDI match. And of course, Bike Rush Owns is gonna be feeling pretty good about that. He's already got a win with Steel Talons against Futurama's GDI. We have ourselves a map that I have never seen a competitive game on. So I'm excited to see this map. I have looked around at it uh, a little bit. But uh, yeah, I've never actually seen a match on this map. So it's one of the new ones to me. Glad to be seeing a game from these two players on it. And yeah, it's got a little subway in the middle for which it is named. That is an abandoned subway. Two tib spikes per player. Expansion point in the north in between these two third bases, which, you know, I guess. And I assume these subway entrances don't actually work. I'm trying to remember if there are any maps that the subway uh, buildings actually work. The original idea was these are kind of like, you know, tunnels and generals. 
you can send some units down into them and they can pop out at these subway entrances but I think it's only used in the campaign. I think it was like disabled in the multiplayer version. But I mean, you know, if so, then uh, you could send units into the south and they could uh, they could exit in the north. But yeah, I don't think we'll actually be seeing that. Would be cool to see that. I don't think it's there in the multiplayer, but it is there in the campaign. Barracks gets uh, deployed and it is going to be normal looking game for now we'll see if this uh mrt harassment has anything to do with this game if it is a bit of a disruptor like it was in game number one or perhaps it's a little bit more it's also kind of weird having the blue tiberium in between the two bases from the mains normally it's in between the bases sort of in the natural or it's dead in the center of the map but uh this is kind of a close location they both have foxholes so they can both keep an eye on that blue tiberium pit bulls and apcs out here on the map for futurama he's putting that aggression out onto the map he is trying to catch bike rush unawares and he will manage to catch out one of the mrts away from his buddies so no mass mrt repair and no extra mrts to support these other units no mind drop from either player. The M the APCs are just going to be leaving the battlefield without any uh, mines being deployed. Titans crossing the map. Are you worried, Futurama? You're going to have Titans to deal with. Going for the crush on those harvesters. We will see if Futurama is ready to deal with it. For now, he is gone full on eco mode. So he didn't go barracks. He didn't go war factory. He is uh, he's ready to take on these Titans just with the APCs and the pit bulls that he already has out on the map. Uh, we'll see. We will see because the Titan and the APCs, the MRTs rather, are moving in. First rocket squad is out. Second rocket squad is out. They will be able to launch those rockets and start doing the damage to those Titans. APCs and uh, pit bulls will get the scout on the airfield of Bike Rush Owns, so he knows that those orcas could come in for another pass. And the rockets are here. The reinforcements are here from Futurama, so he will be able to push away these forces. One more Titan in the south could be causing some trouble for Futurama down in his main base. No orcas on the field just yet. But Futurama can't rest easy in this game versus Bike Rush Owns. He's down 0-1. It is a best of nine, so it is a bit of a longer series here in the upper bracket finals. And the grand final is going to be a best of 11. So if you hope to beat Bike Rush here in the upper bracket final, well, there is a chance that he will come back from the lower bracket and you will have to face off against him in a best of 11. Titan gets taken out moments from crushing that harvester and Bike Rush Owns is going to be able to steal that blue Tiberium. No blue Tiberium for you. And it looks like uh, Bike Rush Owns might be getting some upgrades before he goes for those Orcas. Maybe he got hard points. What's the research time? It's one minute. Wow, that is a long time. Stratofighter doesn't take as long as hard points, which I guess it makes sense, but it seems like Stratofighter, because it's a Firehawk only upgrade, should take longer just because it's later in the game. But like, I guess that doesn't, you know, that doesn't mean anything. Futurama moving out through the middle of the map. He will take his army and he will meet Bike Rush on the field of battle. Meanwhile, defending against these Titans back at home, sending his own Harvester to the Blue Tiberium to match the Harvester, the Blue Tiberium stealing of Bike Rush Owns. Bike Rush Owns gets an expansion into the north and he comes back to deal with these forces of Futurama. Grenadiers, sniper squads, riflemen, rockets, everything is here from Futurama. He may not have upgrades on his tanks, but he has got quite a few tanks to roll over this battlefield. Double War Factory on the front line, double watchtower behind it, but no AP ammo for Bike Rush 
drones. He's got rail guns, but he doesn't have AP ammo. He's got firehawks to clean up the hammerheads, but he just now has AP ammo finishing up. Another Wolverine steps out onto the map. Another Harvester taking the damage. The second War Factory will go down, and Futurama's army will be getting pushed away by Bike Rush. Double War Factory snipe is really nice for Futurama, but Bike Rush has that expansion in the north. He has that sneaky base that Futurama doesn't know about, but Futurama has the straightforward base that Bike Rush doesn't know about. Refinery gets sniped. A nice Firehawk strike from Bike Rush to clean up that. But it's going to be a double barracks drop in the north. Futurama looks like he is out biking bike, but can he do it late into the game? Can he get himself some rail guns, some late game upgrades, and survive the tier three fight with bike? Starting with that third base up in the north, that is a good way to start out this game or this late game stage of the match. A couple of Harvester kills would be nice as well. Stop those Harvesters from transitioning to the third base. Stop them from being used later on by bike. Ah, that Harvester's so low on health. No slingshots here for Futurama, so he has to deal with the hammerheads just with the straight-up rockets. Lots of infantry from Futurama. He has been playing very infantry-heavy in this game. As regular old GDI, the rocket squads all got sniped, unfortunately, for Futurama. He does not have a lot of anti-air mixed in with this army, so he's going to be losing some Predator tanks as they deploy out to the battlefield and retreat back home from the battlefield. Those hammerheads will cut them up. At the same time, Firehawks continuing to bomb out the power plants of Futurama. Futurama says, I've got to just cross the map with my MCV. I've got to try and make this work. He's got a bunch of random rocket squads crossing the map, trying to deal with the forces of Bike Rush. He'll be able to get a couple of kills on these Hammerheads. Four Hammerheads, though, with that AP ammo, can take out a lot of rockets, even low on health. The rockets don't split their rockets, and the hammerheads will survive. <laughs> no, they all go down with the last couple of shots there. Those hammerheads fall, and the last reinforcing hammerhead will survive. That heavy harvester, so low on health earlier on, does survive past all of that. More power plants going down. Futurama just cannot keep the lights on with Bike Rush owns constantly bombing out every power plant from under him. Futurama has this third base and he is going all out to assault the third base of Bike Rush owns. It's Predator tanks, APCs, and rockets. A shockingly low tech army. No upgrades for those Predator tanks. No rail guns to help them out versus these rail gun mammoths, rail gun titans, and AP ammo wolverines. But it's going to be just sheer numbers for Futurama. He's hoping that his almost double unit count station will be able to surpass, surpass the technological superiority of Bike Rush Owns. Predator tanks washing over these harvesters over this third base of Futurama or of Bike Rush Owns as Futurama loses. No, he doesn't lose the refinery. The laser fence saves it from those four, those four firehawks. Red tanks knocking down one refinery. They will get the second refinery as well. Futurama held on to both of his refineries at his third location while knocking down both of the refineries of Bike Rush owns his third base. War Factory does still stand. Mammoth tanks getting eaten up. It's going to be fully heroic missile squads chewing away at these mammoths, getting magnificent damage onto their rear and side armor. And the GG comes out. Bike Rush owns has been defeated. And Futurama puts a point on the board. He will not go quietly into the night. He is on equal standing with Bike Rush owns, heading into game number three of the upper bracket final. And it's here on Pipeline Problems that we break the cycle, we change it up. Because in the north, playing the red black hand, it's Bike Rush Owns who has decided that Steel Talons is not the right choice. And I guess you decide, hey, I've got this blue Tiberium, I'm gonna go for a crane opener, 
Would I rather play Steel Talons or would I rather play something else? Because, of course, in the South, playing GDI Futurama has stayed the course three games in a row. A loss, a win, and as yet undecided. We shall see if GDI on Pipeline beats Bike Rush's Black Hand. For the current moment, both players rushing towards that blue Tiberium are staying neck and neck in total resources gathered and in income per minute. Bike Rush owns. I would not be surprised if it is Black Hand and then it is an extremely aggressive play. Black Hand does tend towards that. Also wouldn't be surprised if there is just a huge wall of rockets, of upgraded rockets with their Black Disciples leading the charge at some point in this game. Futurama, he goes for the command post, goes for a very wide split on these refineries in his main base. Upgrades a power plant, he's got the crane, so as he moves his MCV, he can either queue up a refinery for over here, or he can queue up his tech center. It's uh, building quite slow, so I'd be surprised if it was anything but a refinery or the tech center. I guess it could be a second war factory. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna be a refinery or tier three. He's got the command post already. He's got the airfield as well. Bike Rochon swings over to that predator tank with a couple of bikes, gets the kill. And it is not a bike rush from Bike Rush. He does have a couple of bikes out on the map, but certainly no rush. And actually, he goes tier three. So he walks over to the expansion. He's upgrading something immediately. He's got the command post back at home, or the operation center, rather. He's got his war factory prank cranking out some flame tanks, perhaps, because, of course, we saw Futurama in his own semifinal against Rex do some massive damage with black hand flame tanks on this map. So Futurama has to kind of have in the back of his head, hey, black hand flame tanks, they could do a lot of damage. It's going to be the northern refinery that gets tagged by that catalyst missile and a fresh refinery is ready to go immediately. So it is not going to be a refinery on the third base. It is going to be tier three tech and it is going to be a refinery after that. But uh, we'll see what Futurama is able to do. Futurama actually taking the fight to Bike Rush owns. Bike deploys a SAM site immediately. And, uh, okay, there's a flame tank down the left side of the map. I was suddenly remembering that flame tank from much earlier in this game. Second flame tank here on the right side. So we'll try and keep an eye on that. And the crusher, the crane does uh, build or cancel whatever was in that queue. And that's actually going to be it. Bike Rashones does not get very much for that flame tank. Second flame tank. Might be moving through the... Where's that second flame tank? Ah, there it is. He, he sent it back. Scan does come in. Double Barracks has uh, been deployed by Bike Rochones, and actually this flame tank is just walking right down towards this expansion. He is not hiding this flame tank at all. He's not trying to sneak it around the edge or send it into the main base or something. And he will take the laser fence off of that Reclamator hub. Double hand of Nod right onto the front line. I'm not sure exactly why. He sells them off, and an engineer will get the heal on that Reclamator hub. Buys some more time for that Reclamator or for that more to step out onto the field. Redeemer takes a lot of damage. No engineer inside of that Redeemer. Just one black hand squad. Obelisk gets deployed. Another heal up for the Reclamator Hub. Another engineer committed in to save that. Charged particle beams have already finished up for Bike Rush Owns. And there's a third engineer ready to go. A fourth engineer even. A fifth engineer. I guess a couple of these are probably going to jump inside of the Marv once it gets deployed. But Bike Rush Owns has pressed very close to the expansion of Futurama. He is ready to go pretty much immediately. More engineers getting sniped. Every single engineer got sniped, even though this uh, Marv now is here and with two zone troopers inside of it, but no engineers to give it that heal. No engineers to uh, keep its health bar high against all of this Nod firepower. 
Bike Rush Owens, on the other hand, finally has an engineer inside of his Redeemer. He's also going to be pulling back to that War Factory, and Futurama's front line has held strong. Bike Rush Owens apparently has no harvesters, no refinery on his third base. So while Futurama lost a refinery here on the front line and would like to have a refinery here active, it, uh, it almost doesn't matter because Bike Rush Owens isn't matching that level of economy from Futurama. We do still have to worry about a flame tank potentially sneaking by for Bike Rush Owens to do some critical damage to the main base of Futurama. This is an absolutely huge swarm of infantry. Infantry, but Futurama will get the kill on that MCV. Rage Gen fires off. Watchtower may pay a price for it. Our Juggernaut actually does go down here as Bike Rush Owens steps back out onto the front line. Futurama pushed a little bit further forward. He got a War Factory out. He got a bunch of Watchtowers out. But this is going to be an insane amount of firepower descending upon that MCV. So many flames to burn it down, to raise it to the ground. And Bike Rush Owens will not be stopped. The War Factory falls. Falls, the Shatterer falls, and the Marv needs about a hundred sniper teams to support it. One Grenadier squad is not enough to stop the infantry forces of Bike Rush Owens. Where are you going? Marv, you cannot win this fight on your own. He steps out onto the field and he says, I will fight until the end. But like, that's just not gonna work. You need watchtowers, you need something but nothing will come because GG gets called and Futurama will lose game number three. The momentum swings back to the favor of Bike Rush Owns. And the switch up comes once again from Bike Rush Owns on the map, Desert Meadow to Scrin. That's right, it is once again Scrin as the choice for Someone other than Futurama. He is sticking with GDI in this series. He played against Rex's Scrin in the semifinals, and now he will play up against Bike Rush's Scrin. And uh, wow, this map, this is one of the first times I've seen a, the first time I've seen a competitive game on this map. Uh, I did not realize this map has four mutant hobbles, which is absolutely hilarious. Uh, I love that there's a competitive map with four mutant hobbles. Two tip spikes per player. One kind of in uh, one corner of the map and one in the other corner of the map. A little bit of an awkward placement perhaps, but quite a close map by air and not that far by ground either. You've got these ramps into and out of your base. One a little bit smaller than the other, one a little bit bigger. And that definitely means it is a short rush distance kind of a map. Not sure if either one of these players has any experience on this map. This could very well be their first uh, competitive game on this map, their first tournament game on this map. Hopefully they have played some practice games on it before this point, so they're a little bit familiar with it. They have a little bit of experience on it. But uh, yeah, you know, also quite possibly they've never played on this map before. Nerve Center and an upgraded power plant will be the choice for Bike Rush Owns. Futurama, on the other hand, walks up the hill and uh, sends his MCV to this little corner expansion. One thing about this map is with all of this terrain, you do kind of have these somewhat safe areas near your Tiberium fields. I guess this is one that has a kind of 360 degree location. Okay, this is not an expansion. I thought maybe Bike Rush was going for an aggressive expansion, and then he was going to leave this one open for the late game, but uh, he is, okay, he's not decided. He has not decided what he wants to do. We have a couple of APC rockets moving out onto the field. Futurama, I don't think, has clocked this MCV location. I don't know that he, uh, he spotted the nerve center, how quick it was, so at any rate... He is, uh, he's aware now. <laughs> he's got the picture. And the MCV is going to take a lot of damage as it deploys. It does take bonus damage when it's in the deploy animation, but fortunately for Bike Rush Owns, and not a lot of rockets impacted him during that time. Portal does get deployed. We can assume it is Disintegrators coming out from Bike Rush Owns, and he is going to go on an all-out assault against Futurama from very close quarters. He knew that it was a close quarters map, and he said, you know what? It's going to be even closer quarters. 
as he stasises the War Factory. Not something you see very often. I'm not sure if that War Factory placement is actually beneficial, uh, but Futurama is going to try it. He's got a bunch of watchtowers. It would be great if he had known that this was coming and that he had gotten AP ammo at this point, but what can you do? You don't expect this kind of an attack coming out from Bike Rush Owens. You may expect aggression, but you do not expect this attack coming out at the sub four minute mark. And well, deployed that war factory and I think one unit was produced from it, maybe two, as actually Bike Rush Owens will be defeated. I really thought Bike Rush Owens was gonna fight that one out a lot longer. Uh, okay. So Futurama actually is now 2-2 against Bike Rush Owens. That is not how I thought that game was going to go, but the uh, super aggro build does not work for Bike Rush Owens. And uh, I think that was the reason why not enough economy. And I cannot believe that that worked out, but there we go. Futurama puts himself on equal footing with Bike Rush Owens. And we are here on Tournament Wasteland for game number five. Another, another momentum maker for either one of these players. Will it be the now Traveler 59 in the north? This is Bike Rush Owns. Or will it be the Cyan Blackhand finally switching things up after four games in a row? This is Futurama. Tournament Wasteland. I think I have seen a game on this map, but I don't think it was a tournament game. I think it might have just been a random match on this map. But uh, yeah, maybe it, was a, maybe it was a show match. So maybe it was a competitive match, but it was just a show match. Two tib spikes for each player. Traveler 59 from Bike Rush. I feel like we're going to be seeing some cultists. You know, maybe not. Maybe he's just playing Traveler 59 for other screen reasons. But consider considering the fact that he's willing to set aside the stasis shield, which is an extremely powerful support power, I have to assume he is going prodigy, he is going cultists, he's going to try and make this one a guaranteed victory by using mind control to kill his opponent. Futurama, on the other hand, shifting into Black Hand. He wants that infantry killing firepower. He wants those Black Hand, Black Disciples to burn down this map. And we'll see which one of these ends up being the superior strategy. Pretty short walk to your natural expansion on Tournament Wasteland. Now that I'm looking at this, I mean, this is a dark map. It's a desert map. You know, it's got some wastelandy aspects of it, but I don't know. I feel like we should have a chemical plant or something. We should have like, uh, uh, maybe this is the Tiber River Valley where the Tiberium meter, meteor impacted or something. You know, it's just like, yeah, it's like a darker desert map. It's a less happy desert map, but it is very much a, uh, a red zone map and it's just not wastelandy enough for me. And that's, that's, I guess, what I'm saying. But all credit to the map designer. They have put together a very uh, brown monotone map, but a very nice map, all things together. You know, they put in the effort. They get, they've got the doodads. They've got the design. They've got the aesthetics all nailed. They did a very good job. All right. Secret tanks going to put out a little bit of damage here. Uh, we're hoping to see more scorpions respond to this. Harvester juking, how good is it going to be? It is repair drones committed from Bike Rush Owns, so not something we necessarily see every time, but you're really happy if you get a kill with these repair drones and this lightning spike, but this could also just be the end of the game. If you get enough of kills right here, right now, Bike Rush Owns can win it all right here. The control is good from both players, only losing a couple of Scorpion tanks on the side of Futurama. And Bike Rush Owns losing a couple of Seeker tanks. Not a surprise against all of these Scorpions. A couple of these Scorpions maybe could be target fired a little bit better by Bike Rush Owns, but he does eventually get the kill. And this Gunwalker will get chased to perhaps the corner of the map by Futurama. Harvester's transitioning down and Bike Rush Owns goes for the Stasis Chamber, goes for the portal, and quite possibly is going for Tier 3 now. I guess, uh, no, he does have the Nerve Center. So he does have that going for him. 
and uh, could be into tier three, could be into cultists. He's got fast legs already, so he's got those advanced articulators. He's hoping that he can advance, articulate his way into a victory. And I just have to assume cultists and the prodigy are going to be on their way for bike rush owns. Quite possibly just off of these three. Yep. Okay. Never mind. There's the, there's the tier three. So we've got all the pieces. All the pieces are now in play for an MCV steal or just a very annoying good time if you're a bike rush owns fan. If you like seeing winning, then Bike Rush Owns is your guy. Not so much in this series, as he is on even standing with Futurama, but he is going to be able to get himself two Harvester kills, one of them completely full of Tiberium, and the descents will go down, but this base is derelict now, and Bike Rush Owns has done a massive strike to the economy of Futurama at a time when Futurama is hoping to move across the map and make a name for himself. Futurama is hoping to bring his aggression to the front line and to the front door of bike rush owns cultists grabbing units trying to be as annoying as possible scorpion tank gets grabbed by bike rush owns and it will be up to the forces of futurama to deal with the mind control you know you're up against traveler 59 this is just one of those things that you have to have an answer for a lot of the other factions they go for the aircraft but black hand you got to come up with a different solution that is for certain and futurama has chosen an extremely aggressive attack path he's gone beam cannons he has now gone hand of nod as well and he is hoping to identify something and no he almost gets the tier three this slow field comes in from bike rush owns and futurama upset at his denied attack attack there and on top of that this annihilator tripod is phased he does barely miss the crush on those beam cannons and instead will settle for the crush on these rocket squads Futurama now has to deal with a flame tank of his own design being sent back to attack his base and he will have to kill it off but being that close to killing off the tier three of your opponent, having it saved, not by them outsmarting you, but by them using a, uh, a support power quickly and then sending a mind control prodigy to uh, deal with your flame tank. It doesn't feel as good as getting that sneaky flame tank around the edge of the map to go for the kill on your opponent's tier three tech. Beam cannons, if they have a had a little bit more space, if they had a little bit more time, they would have been able to burn down those tripods. But in this case, a couple of them turned over to the side of Bike Rush Owns. They are confused as their minds get controlled and the GG comes out from Futurama. Bike Rush Owns finds himself with another quick victory, this time on Tournament Wasteland, giving him the momentum advantage once again. Anything you can do, I can do better is the tune you will hear sung here on Tournament Arena because these two guys have swapped places. They have, wow, okay, this is an MCV cell. This is an all-in from Futurama. Uh, is he going, why does he still have his MCV? What is he waiting for? Uh, there we go. Okay, I was like, is he going one more power plant or something? But no, this is it. Uh, all right, so <laughs> what are we going to see here? <laughs> well, Futurama is down by one point against Bike Rush Owns, and he is going for an absolute killer strat. I don't think I've ever actually seen this work. I've seen this happen a couple of times. I don't think it has ever worked. This is an extremely difficult thing to pull off. If your opponent is just, you know, if they don't scout or they're just not ready for it, this absolutely can work. Uh, a little bit of a miss there on those mind control grenades. Good burst damage on that shredder turret gets all of it. Unfortunately, not able to land the kill on the power plant to take the lights out. And it looks like he might actually get the MCV, but no, it doesn't matter. I mean, I don't think he was going to win, but he could have gotten the MCV there and that will do it. That's the GG for Futurama as Bike Rush owns gets another win in the upper bracket final best of nine okay so as it turns out one of the replays is missing from the upper bracket final and as it turns out one of the replays is also missing from the lower bracket final but i've been told the grand grand final has all of the replays so 
Uh, it was Bike Rush. Bike Rush won this grand or in this upper bracket final. So Bike Rush will advance on to the grand final. Uh, unfortunately, we only got to see six out of the, I guess, seven games. Uh, but I guess that's how it turns out. So let's jump down to the lower bracket final to see how that goes to see who will be facing Bike Rush in the grand final of the Autumn Duel. And once again, we are back here on Small Town USA here in game number one of the lower bracket finals in the south playing the green steel talons this is drive and in the north playing the cyan black hand this is futurama steel talons versus black hand not something we see very often a matchup that in the earlier days of Kane's Wrath would have been a bit of a joke matchup. The Steel Talons would have been hugely disadvantaged. By the way, Futurama dropping down here from the upper bracket final. I did want to highlight Drive's path through this tournament. We saw him versus Bike Rush Owns there in the upper bracket semifinal, but he dropped down and he actually played against Shock Trepid in, a, I think, a best of five. He beat Shock Trepid. Master Leaf lost against Rex. So Rex we saw against uh, Futurama. And he dropped down. He beat Master Leaf. And then he lost to Drive. So Drive beat Rex in the lower bracket semifinal. I started casting those games. But uh, I don't know what was going wrong <laughs> with Drive and with Rex. But those games that I saw were very boring and very bad. And uh, not, not bad, bad, not like I was playing them, but just it was not the level that you normally expect from Drive and from Rex. By the way, I love this little combo from Drive. He's got the Rifleman inside of the building, and then he's got the Titan and the MRT. So it's like sort of this perfect combination to just harass these Harvesters and harass these Scorpion tanks. Mind Drop gets deployed, and now the Titan goes the wrong way around the building. I don't know what that Titan was doing, and Drive doesn't seem to know either as he beacons a million times on top of that Titan. And that Titan was like, he was pathing this way, and then he went, nope, I'm going back around the front of the building. I don't know what that was. Uh, that very clearly is not what Drive intended to do, and uh, either he, he misclicked, and it took the Titan way too long to correct, like where you click once on the wrong side of the building and then you click a, a thousand times on the correct side of the building, but the Titan just ignores all of the thousand correct clicks and keeps walking the wrong way, which uh, by the way, we've got Orcas swinging now into the base of Futurama. One Harvester down, a second Harvester will get eliminated. Well, only three Orcas, so I guess not a fourth, a third Harvester rather. If you have four Orcas, then you can get three Harvesters. Mind Drop does uh, catch a little bit of damage on that buggy. But as I was saying, Drive uh, came down through the lower bracket. He beat uh, Shock Trap and he beat Rex. And now he is here versus Futurama. But yeah, those Rex versus Drive games were just uh, so boring. I'm not sure what was happening between the two of those players. And as a result, I jumped out of those games and then I did not finish that series. I just, uh, you know, decided to see who would show up versus, uh, who would show up in the loser bracket final, which is where we are now. Orca's off on the north side of the map. Meanwhile, Futurama takes over the middle of the map. He's got himself some Black Disciples. He has got his full upgrade of infantry and Orca is going to commit heavy into this attack. Every single Orca goes down. So that is a clean sweep of the deck of Drive. He did not get the value from four Orcas that he got from three. I mean, he did get one Harvester. I think he got some damage onto another Harvester. So yeah, potentially he can swing back through, do some more harassing. But wow, that is not what you expect to get from four Orcas. Couple of Scorpion tanks here for Futurama. And Drive uh, 
You know, he's come through the lower bracket. Futurama just lost to Bike Rush Owns, and whoever wins this series is going to get a rematch versus Bike Rush. Either drive a rematch from the semifinals. He's definitely going to need to take things up a notch, or it's going to be Futurama who's going to get a rematch versus Bike Rush Owns. And he is also going to need to take things up a notch because that grand final is a best of 11 and bike rush owns comes into it with a one point advantage because he is the upper bracket winner so as a result bike rush owns will be even harder to defeat you have to go the full distance in that best of 11 and you have uh, one additional game that you don't have to drop so it's gonna be a tough fight for either one of these fellows tier three is up for bike rush owns he's got i guess i would assume it's charged particle beams i guess it could be tib core if he wants to go into uh bikes he wants to go futurama wants to go into a huge amount of bikes after this but he's going multi mcv so charge particle beams finishes up and he is ready for that shredder turret christmas tree action neon christmas tree of death tier three comes up for drive does not immediately start rail guns so i am curious maybe he wants this well no he packs up his mcv so unless he's got a second mcv out here he's not getting to marv anytime soon with that tier three it's just gonna be mammoths or behemoths coming out from this gdi or from this steel talons player i mean i guess he could be going firehawks but I don't expect to see Firehawks versus a Nod player. It does happen, but uh, this late versus Futurama, I would not expect to see Firehawks be the reason that Drive went Tier 3. But Drive has a couple of Scorpion tanks that he needs to worry about. He's got this, uh, he's got a couple of buggies he has to worry about as well. The Behemoth gets jumped on pretty much immediately by these Scorpions. The Hammerhead gets hunted down by those buggies and the scorpions will go down harvesters with rockets inside of them helping to deal with those scorpions and the mcv will unpack for future or for drive meanwhile futurama already has his northern expansion underway the multi mcv life does afford you that faster expanding style and futurama will have to deal with the mechanized monsters of steel talons one of the fun things about this matchup is Futurama, he is all about the infantry. He's got those black hand hordes of infantry, amazing upgrades, amazing firepower from the infantry. And then Drive, he is Steel Talons. He is the mechanized division of GDI, the behemoths, the railguns, the titans, the wolverines, the mammoth tanks. It is infantry versus vehicles in this game. And it is multi MCV versus single MCV. Which one will dominate the other? As Futurama deploys, but he did not have an obelisk queued. If he did, it got used on the other side of the map. Flame Tank coming right through the middle and he will go for that poor factory. And I think he's gonna get it as well with only a couple of guns to target down this Flame Tank. It is not a quick kill on a Flame Tank. It does go down eventually, but not before doing some damage, killing off that war factory. And Futurama has made a donation to Drive. He says, I would like you to take my MCV. And Drive says, okay. <laughs> he says, I will do it. I'll kill your MCV. It's not a problem. And in the result, Futurama just has one MCV now. A little bit sad for him because he moved his original MCV down to the south with no plan, apparently, which is not what I would expect from Futurama. I would expect him to have a plan, but in this case, he apparently just had no plan. He was going to throw his MCV down there and then hope that some magic happened and the MCV survived, but instead, the MCV died. Mantis will commit into this attack or into this defense and kill off at least one hammerhead. Might get the second hammerhead if he tries to chase it down. Rocket squads might just get the kill on the Mantis and that'll be the end of that Mantis's domination. Charged Particle Beam coming in to make these Confessor Cabal squads that much more powerful. Titans and MRTs are here. Behemoth as well. Nice Orca Strike gets called in gets the kill on a couple of those squads, helps to clean up this infantry army as it rocks into the main base of Drive. Futurama, his attack falls a little bit flat, but 
he's at least got that expansion in the corner of the map similarly drive has now well established his own expansion it was slower than futurama's it's not quite as profitable as futurama's just yet but it is getting there and it has allowed drive to stabilize here in the late game of small town usa another flame tank fortunately there is a behemoth here so as long as the behemoth lands the shots which is you know a little bit of rng as far as how the behemoth hits well that was definitely made up for the first shot when the behemoth lands all three of those of those uh rounds into one target that is some massive damage garrisonable structure now going to be pushing away that behemoth and radar jamming missile fires off as you can see there oftentimes that is accompanied by a flame tank well here we go flame tank is right here i was gonna say it's maybe a little bit late because the flame tank at the natural expansion was already dead but there was a second flame tank you take your opponent's radar offline for a couple of seconds and you hopefully hit them with a flame tank at the same time that they don't notice that is why you saw futurama doing that verse rex in those first couple of games in the semifinals. there were a number of radar jamming missiles firing off by futurama and that was exactly to distract him from those flame tanks although because radar jamming missile is so often used with a kind of sneaky attack Anytime a radar jamming missile goes off, you should absolutely have those alarm bells going off of like, all right, my opponent is probably trying to do something, but oftentimes you have multiple things to worry about. So it does still sometimes work. Scouting squad comes in. Redeemer timing has been revealed by that scouting squad. If drive is paying attention, Orca strike coming in will be dodged. A complete whiff there, nicely done by Futurama. And the Redeemer is now out on the map. Immediately sells off the Redeemer Engineering Facility as well. Gets a third MCV, so back to the multi-MCV lifestyle for Futurama. Small Town USA, I feel like normally this is a more chaotic and shorter runtime for a map but this one has actually gone the distance between these two players possibly a testament to drive and futurama just having so much experience versus each other so many games played against each other in their prime and even though drive isn't necessarily in his prime anymore he is still giving futurama a good showing Sam Turret getting targeted down. Those behemoths will chew it up, no problem. But the MCB, I think, is out of range of the behemoths for the current moment. Obelisk gets deployed. Watchtower will be there to absorb the damage. And at the same time, massive infantry army moving in for Futurama. He is hoping to make short work of Drive's main base. He's tried it once before, and he will try it again. And Drive cannot hold on against all this firepower. Maybe he could deal with the infantry. A heroic rifleman inside of this MRT is a powerful thing, but not with the Redeemer barreling down his throat. Not with that redeemer able to burn through everything orcas are back out on the field that drives airfield coming back from the dead but it just does not matter and even if drive holds off this attack on the right side which is not a guarantee he still doesn't have a good answer to this redeemer to this infantry army that just torched his main base and is fueled by that field in the top left hand corner drive with 8.9k 9k in the bank ends the game with a huge float unfortunately for drive if he had converted that 9k into units he definitely would have stood a better chance against futurama at the end of game number one futurama wants that rematch with bike rush owns in the grand finals and he's taking the first step towards getting it back on tiberium rift it's almost the same story as tournament arena anything you can do i can do better but this time instead of playing steel talons futurama has opted for just plain old gdi so even though drive played steel talons in that last game drive is now playing black hand he has 
opted for the choice of Futurama from game number one. And Futurama has gotten close to the choice of drive in game number one. Tiberium Rift, a map that we have seen a ton, and we have also seen Drive versus Futurama a ton over the last couple of years. This feels like an absolute classic. This map, this matchup, this faction matchup even. GDI versus Blackhand. It is the asymmetry of Kane's Wrath, but it is one of those extremely popular combos that feels standard even though they are, you know, a little bit different. And of course it is Kane's Wrath. It's not so asymmetrical that it is, uh, that it, the factions are so different to play that you can't really master them all. And so this mix up feels just like a, a warm blanket. For those of us who have seen a lot of Kane's Wrath, this is a very comfort pick. Like if I just saw this game on the random, I'd be like, all right, there's a pretty good chance that this is just a solid match. Maybe I wouldn't cast it, maybe I would, but uh, it's like, you know that these two guys are almost certainly going to open up macro-oriented. You almost can write the first couple of minutes of the game from memory, and you know that the late game is going to have, you know, something interesting going on. Either Drive is going to go crazy aggressive, or Futurama is just going to dominate with a huge economy, and there will be something of note in this case... Drive goes for a second war factory, and this is the reverse of a of a fake out. This is I'm gonna deploy my war factory right next to your scouting unit on purpose, basically. He's like, hey Futurama, I'm going to war factories before refinery. You better be ready for it. And uh, I think Futurama will be. He has got lots of time to prepare. He saw the war factory get deployed and the Rifleman was killed off by these forces. So Futurama has more than max. He, he actually thinks he has less time to prepare than he actually does. He powered down that refinery because he thought this attack was hitting 30 seconds sooner than it actually was hitting. Futurama is like over prepared for this. And yeah, he calls, he, un, he powers that refinery back up because he's like, well, I guess the attack isn't coming. And nope, it is going to show up. But again, Futurama has had so much time to prepare that this attack may not even happen. And Drive knows it because he's keeping half of his forces back at home. And you wouldn't do that if you thought you had some huge, aggressive, all-in potential. Not even, not necessarily all-in, but some huge, aggressive potential where you were going to catch your opponent unawares. And it's great that Drive kept this stuff back at home. He's going to be able to jump on a couple of these pit bulls, get the kills right away. And this is a little bit of a trade from these players. Harvester is going to take some heavy damage, but with all of the forces that Drive has to defend, he's not actually going to lose the Harvester. And with that War Factory there, he's going to lose a little bit of mining time going for the repairs, but not all that much. And well, I guess he might not even go for the repairs. Both players trying some early game aggression and it kind of just doesn't work out. They both defend against it well enough. And you know, maybe Drive was goofing a little bit there with that attack. He never really was going to attack, I guess, because he was, he was signaling it so clearly to his opponent. I guess he did just want to force Futurama to respond. Futurama did respond. He slowed his own economy. He got those extra watchtowers. He held some of his pit bulls back at home. And I guess that's what Drive wanted. Otherwise, that was just Drive clowning around and not playing very well. But the result kind of looks like Drive, uh, you know, he got the result that he wanted slowed down the economy of Futurama and didn't have to actually commit any units to do it. Futurama has these additional riflemen dotted around the map. I love the late scout somewhere around the seven minute mark for Futurama or for, you know, any player you want to have that continuous scout and Futurama has already had a couple of looks inside of Drive's base. So he's going to take another one here. There's riflemen going to be cutting down through from the north to the south and he will get a look inside of the base of Drive. He will see the timing perhaps of the MCV move might even see the secret shrine and some of those upgrades that are coming in nothing too shocking futurama is not really going to have any new 
uh, things to change the meta with because of this. Instead, he'll just be like, all right, I know exactly what you're doing. It's not a big surprise, it's not a big shock, but now I just know what you are doing. Bike's going to be trading out against Pitbulls. This bike buggy combo from Drive has gotten almost out of hand, but it is being corralled by Futurama. And what a time for a second MCV to pop out for Futurama. Immediately, it takes massive damage. The Harvester's also being jumped on. Drive may be retired, but he is still a fearsome fighting force for Futurama to deal with. The Conyard does survive for Futurama, so he is not dead in that sense. He didn't just waste 3,500 credits on an MCV, and he will get some free repairs courtesy of that War Factory. Get it back up to at least half health, and honestly, he probably should have stuck around a little bit longer, especially if he wants to cross the map with this MCV, and especially if he wants to go for a kill on the third base of Drive. Drive has gone for a huge infantry pump up. He's got that bike buggy to help hold the line. He doesn't even have Tibcor, and he's still tearing that MCV apart because Futurama didn't want it to heal up to full health. He didn't want to take the time to heal the MCV up to full health with the use of that War Factory. And the result is he didn't get a great Reclamator Hub position. Like, he didn't get the Reclamator Hub way out here because he was just so quick with his MCV. The MCV died, and he basically deployed this in the build radius that he almost already had with the war factory where it already was so i'm not sure really what was gained by futurama not waiting for that heal up by that mcv but uh i guess hindsight is 2020 and in this case futurama knows that he is putting a marv out into a huge amount of firepower Fortunately, that first volley of rockets actually in the second volley of rockets as well went into the reclamator hub Which just got sold off the bikes aren't even attacking this marv They could be burning this marv down so incredibly quickly and they're just not the bikes are cutting up to the north They are hunting harvesters and futurama's economy is absolutely gutted from this attack from drive a couple of bikes are definitely going to be going down there even trading out against a predator tank it's not the best trade for the bikes they need to be killing those harvesters as quickly as possible but i guess because the marv is being kept busy in the south by this horde of infantry drive is okay with losing a couple of bikes in the north through some inefficient engagement futurama's economy has been curtailed he has been slowed down and the gg gets called that marv was going to take even more damage as it tried to escape up to the north and drive putting out an extremely aggressive game I don't even know that it's extremely aggressive. I don't know what to call it, but it just felt like so oppressive and present. It felt like smothering of Futurama. I mean, Futurama, he's a great player, and he should be outclassing Drive here, but Drive has still got it. It seems Drive and Futurama are happy with their choices because here on Pipeline Problems, they have decided to keep the Black Hand versus GDI matchup going. They're like, you know what? It was good. Let's run it back. Let's try it again. But let's do it with more money. So the Blue Tiberium will be the focus for the first part of this game. And I expect a mirror matchup from these unmirrored factions. Futurama. Well, he got overwhelmed. Like I said, it felt oppressive. It felt like a smothering blanket coming over the face of Futurama. All of that infantry firepower. And if that wave didn't work out that Drive had cooking in the main base of Futurama, he had a whole nother wave of infantry queued up behind that. Another massive swell of rockets in the middle of the map. And... We'll see if it's any different because that would be crazy for Futurama to open with a really strong game number one and then fall down two games in a row to a retired drive. Now, of course, again, just to say retired isn't retired here in Command and Conquer. I think Bike Rush has retired about six times and he's still performing very well. And uh, I know he's played in uh, Christmas Comes Early as well. 
which is another tournament that I haven't gotten to yet, but I will. And of course, Bike Rush Owns is hosting the Mystery Cup, which is playing right around the time that this video will come out. So I'm going to check out those replays as well. So everyone is retired. Uh, I guess I'm even retired and we're all still here. We're all still here, but we're all retired. And I think that just means we're all tired, but we're all still cranking away and drive is no different in that sense. Futurama cleaning up in the economy front of this game. Ooh, where are you going, Harvester? That was not good. Where's this? Okay, this is a predator tank. I was like, who's leaving these tracks all across the map? But uh, Futurama cleaning up his economy a little bit more total resources gathered than drive about 4k more. Uh, oh, part of that is this drive spent the cash on an engineer. He spent the time and the effort to get the engineer over there to that tib spike and he didn't actually capture that tib spike. So do the math on a couple of minutes. He's actually down the 500 credits that he spent on the engineer because he hasn't gotten the cash back yet. And he's down probably two minutes worth of income. So that's 1,200 credits of total resources gathered, which is part of the reason why Futurama has an income advantage at this point. He's plus 2K per minute ahead of drive, and he's plus 5K total resources gathered ahead of drive. Part of that might be Futurama has just been playing more games recently. He's in that little bit of better shape. So when it comes to the Blue Tiberium, you see a bigger spike between these two players with the one who's 5% faster, who's 3% more in shape than the other guy. And yeah, every minute that goes by, that's another 600 credits not claimed by Futurama. Dri or by Drive. Hopefully Drive attacking his opponent's tib spike will kind of make him realize that his own tip spike isn't captured but it does not seem to be the case blue tiberium has been cleaned up by both players airfield is out here on the map and hey when you don't capture your own tip spike you really can't afford to give away units and the mantis does get one kill man mantis is kill hammerheads extremely quickly and uh well in this case he gets one kill which I guess it's worth it, but we'll see uh, how many more kills the rest of these hammerheads end up getting. That, uh, that one that's low on health actually does not get sent back for repairs. Flame tank does back off. Couple of predator tanks, couple of APCs here on the left side of the map. Tier three is out for Futurama, but he is not going for that uh, rail, for those rail guns. Instead, he is holding off on those railguns for the current moment. And wow, well, we are approaching like 2,400 credits uh, that this engineer could have claimed for his friend Drive. But oh, we got Purifying Flame. Yes, Drive. We love to see it. This MCB is going to get torched. I mean, yeah, the, the flame tank is going to go down. But if he had been able to burn down that MCV. It would have lost a ton of health. And uh, we will see it with this refinery. Even though it's laser fenced, it is still going to die very, very quickly to this. It's the, he actually got the refinery with two juggernauts, hammerheads, and a watchtower shooting at him. He still got the refinery. The MCV is going to take massive damage. You're going to take quarter damage in like one second of that flame tank attacking it. And yeah, Drive has definitely lost out on 2,400 credits worth of income. Marv is out on the map. Redeemer is now also out on the map. So we've got the double railgun, double engineer Marv making its way to the battlefield. And it looks like it is going to be a double flame. What are the, what are the choices here for Drive? Definitely one flame. Well, he's got two black hand squads there. So I don't know what his plan is, but he does have two black hand squads. We'll see if he maybe just goes double engineer for the survivability once the extra HP. There are two hands of Nod onto the front line, and he also... Okay, finally, he beacons it. 640. So I think we can comfortably say that's five minutes of lost income, like, for sure. Maybe five and a half, maybe six minutes of income. But 
five minutes that's three grand minimum three grand minimum that drive would be at and that's almost exactly the difference between their total resources gathered it's like four grand for futurama so yep that's uh that's the difference that that engineer makes that 500 dollars cash back much earlier on and that extra income every minute another flame tank goes down another flame tank cleaned out Ooh, one of these flame tanks might just make it through there's another two there's two more flame tanks in the middle of the map three more flame tanks this guy's going crazy with the flame tanks uh you know get the crane get all of the power plants get the command post as well pretty undefended on the left side of the map but there are hammerheads always hammerheads in this hammerheads have seen the flame tank rage gen does fire off and that flame tank will eventually go down juggernauts getting targeted down shockwave artillery gets called in it captures that redeemer with the first shot that lands the marv will get targeted down by every single rocket squad on the front line the marv will go down not enough sniper teams to clean up that front line of infantry the redeemer comes back online just in time to go down into the grave to meet his marv friend down below the ground the mcv targeted down that pure Fine flame is so incredibly powerful and just like the earlier game that we saw of bike rush versus futurama drive washes over the expansion of futurama with an absolutely unbreakable wall of rockets cabals and black disciples the darkness is coming and futurama can do nothing to stop it Futurama may want his rematch with Bike, but so does Drive, and Drive puts a second point on the board, taking momentum back from Futurama and putting himself into a great position for game number four. Hey, what was that thing we just did, says Drive? Let's run it back one more time. Welcome now to Threshold 19 for game number four of this best of nine. Futurama grabs GDI once again, grabs his three Tiberium spikes and drive despite the income disadvantage was able to produce such an incredible infantry army that it could not be stopped. Futurama had so many flame tanks to worry about, so many blue flame boys to take down that he didn't have the hammerheads, the riflemen, the sniper teams, the APCs on the front line to burn down that infantry wall as their guns came blazing towards Futurama. Well, let's see it again. How many flame tanks can you build? The answer might be infinite. The answer might be as many flame tanks as the game engine of Sage will allow me. But it's not. It's going to be Reckoner. Two Reckoners even. Is this... What? Don't you build a hand of Nod? What is this? What is this build? This isn't a build. Is he going double operation center? Triple operation center? Okay, I know the build where you get a hand of Nod, you get two or three or four rocket squads, and you put them in the Reckoners. It's uh, it's a vehicle killer, and it is cheaper than going for those... Is he going super delayed? I think he might be going four operation centers to get the black hand squads, but he's intentionally delaying it. The Rifleman is seeing this, though. So Futurama knows that this is the play, and Drive is just going to cut his losses. So he's just going to load up one... Uh, well, I don't know what he's doing. I don't think this is working out the way that he intended. Drive definitely wanted this to go a different way. Oh, what are you doing? Nothing's getting in now. Nothing's getting in now. Well, maybe this one will sneak in. But this is the one with only one black hand squad in it. Oh, this is not going well. All right, well, that's the end of that. I don't know what the plan was there for Drive. You can see the shape of the plan that he had. You can see the shape of the intention for what he was thinking. 
but uh, that just did not materialize. Predator Tank going for the crush on that Black Hand squad. And okay. <clears throat> The Redeemer is going for the repairs back at home, so the Redeemer will have another shot at this. And this is the Redeemer with two Black Hand Squads in it. So one Black Hand Squad, you know, going for the annoying strat, trying to do as much damage as he can, you know, forcing that Predator tank to deal with that Black Hand Squad. And now the Redeemer is back up to full health. And you can go for another run. Oh, please get Purifying Flame again. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Okay, get Black Disciples first, sure. Oh. But get Purifying Flame afterwards. That's why you won that last game. Definitely. It wasn't the 800 Rocket Squads. It was the fact that the Black Disciples at the front of the Rocket Squads also had Purifying Flame. That's the real winner of that last game. All right. I can't fault Drive for not getting Purifying Flame on a map with a huge amount of Blue Tiberium at the start, but there's Blue Tiberium on this map, and, uh, you know, get Purifying Flame. It matches the Blue Tiberium. The Blue Flames match the Blue Tiberium. And, uh, by the way, welcome to the map Threshold 19. If you're one of the people who says this map is too dark, I don't know what to tell you, bud. I don't design the map. I don't choose the brightness level. And, uh, well, you get the command post if he denies AP ammo. Oh, ho, ho, he denied AP ammo. Then the Orca Strike as well got wasted. And that is a killer move as Drive washes into the front main expansion of Futurama with an infantry army. Hammerheads, watchtowers, APCs. Oh, ho, ho wishing they had the additional firepower of AP ammo to help them push back these forces. The bike's getting the kill. Oh, they don't get the kill on that last hammerhead. He can clean up a couple of more squads. He can stop the fully heroic rocket squad from doing even more damage by a couple of more seconds for Futurama to mount his defense. Drive comes through with a huge infantry wave and the perfectly timed reclamator hub or <laughs> reclamator hub the perfectly timed uh squads to get the kill on that command hub i cannot believe how much those reckoners did with those two black hand squads inside of them which i think that that first attack that futurama pushed back actually worked in Drive's favor because I don't think Drive would have gotten something more valuable than a command post kill one second away from AP ammo finishing up. I don't think that first Reckoner moving in would have gotten that much value. Bike does not get the kill on that hammerhead. Once again, the Hammerhead of Futurama does manage to escape. Drive steals the Blue Tiberium from the middle of the map. He's got his natural expansion well established. His economy is soaring. And he's got a fresh wave of infantry ready to go against Futurama. Predator tanks on the front line. Shatterers as well. A solid choice by Futurama. He's got the Watchtowers and ABM who have finally finished up, which is great to see from Futurama. Gives him that fighting chance that he didn't have really in that last engagement. But his MCV may have pushed a little bit too far forward. Let's see if he's got... He doesn't have sniper teams. I feel like you just have to have 20 sniper teams. When you see this wall of infantry, you need a better solution then I'm gonna put up watchtowers one at a time against all of these rockets the hammerheads do a ton to help even this out but when you've got that many bikes this many rockets that front line just moves so forward so incredibly quickly and yeah the con yard with the laser fence is nice but you need APCs you need snipers inside of them and Futurama with his tournament life on the line 
in this series versus Drive finds himself at a crossroads where he has got so much firepower down his throat that he just doesn't have any room to maneuver, any room to breathe. Double War Factory pumping out APCs onto the front line, even using his Harvester to try and go for the crush, but the laser turrets, the bikes, the buggies, everything from Drive makes this an unholdable position by Futurama, and now he loses his MCV, and I believe that was his only MCV out on the map. This was not a multi-MCV play. This was a GG getting called. And we are missing one replay, so that will be it. Drive will win this series, but we don't get to see the last game that was played. Futurama goes into the upper bracket final versus Bike Rush, but ultimately he is knocked out of the tournament by his old rival, Drive. Back from beyond retirement and ready for his rematch in the grand finals versus Bike Rush owns. And welcome back for the last time to Tournament Odyssey Red Zone. Kicking it off with Skrin in the north. This is Bike Rush owns. And in the south, playing that green, plain nod. This is Drive. Scrin vs. Nod. No GDI representation here in the Grand Finals so far. Maybe Drive will switch it up. Maybe Bike Rush will in game number two. And by the way, yes, just as a reminder, you are not seeing things. I didn't make a mistake with the score. Bike Rush owns as the upper bracket winner does indeed start this best of 11 with a one point advantage. So Bike Rush owns, I mean, both players need to get to six wins, but Bike Rush owns gets a bit of an advantage because he has already defeated Drive once. And uh, well, <clears throat> Drive is here ready for the second round, ready to take Bike Rush down in the grand finals. And I mean, hey, if you have to get six wins <laughs> regardless, uh, do it just, you know, 6-0, and you won't have to worry about that one game that Bike Rush has in a win. It only really matters if it comes down to a really tight score, if it is 5-5 five, five, and we go to a game at number 11. Then it's like, okay, you can make a case that, uh, that Bike Rush maybe with that extra win would not have actually won the series, and maybe Drive would have been able to take it or something like that but it's like eh, eh, eh. we'll see if it comes down to a best of 11 and we go to game 11 then that one point advantage will really matter for bike rush owns reactor gets tagged by drive red zone odyssey does have that blue tiberium in the middle of the map instead of the emp control center so we do have to keep an eye on that bike rush owns has been utilizing that i'm kind of surprised that we have not seen with uh since bike rush is playing sprint that we haven't seen fast dev tanks he is going into the synths to help hold off this bike buggy at his natural expansion the bike buggy will get pushed back and bike rush owns might try and turn this into his own push go for a nerve center behind this so that he can get the repair drones he can get that frontline repair as he attacks his opponent but bike rush might also just use this position in the middle of the map to send a harvester to harvest that blue tiberium as we have seen him do in other red zone games already that photon cannon was completely ready Double Photon Cannon at his main. Okay, so Bike Rush Owns is really prepared for that attack. He saw it coming from a mile away, and the bikes are still going to try and dive in right on the right edge of that field. They have a bit of dead space where there is no coverage from those Photon Cannons. Shredder Turret, not a great choice. Laser Turret would be better, but he probably doesn't have a hand of Nod, and the Harvester has gotten enough repairs that... <laughs> the secret tanks are not going to be able to get the kill there just out of that uh just without any additional firepower 
A couple of fresh bikes from Drive will help clean that up. And the remainder of the bikes from Drive, it seems like they came back home. Yeah, a couple of them very, very low on health. We're gonna get those repairs, so. They did a little bit of damage to the harvester of Bike Rush Owns, but I think Bike Rush Owns actually already got healed up. He's still got four harvesters on his main as he's already transitioned over to his natural expansion. And it looks like he is going for the expansion point on the high ground as well as as well as that defensive tower. I thought for a moment there was something else sneaky going on in the south, but it's just a lightning spike. And the nice thing for Bike Rush Owns is this gives him a decent amount of vision in his opponent's base. We'll actually just switch over to Bike's vision for a moment. Okay, we can't see on the mini-map, but that is how much vision a lightning spike gives you. So a lot of times players will use a lightning spike to preserve their vision so that they can see into their opponent's base super late into the game. That also may have influenced the placement of of the tier three over there next to the MCV rather than in this southern position. Quite possibly, Bike Rush Owns kind of forced that out of drive. Bike Rush Owns also kind of distracting drive. It looks like the engineer did end up getting sniped. So no expansion for Bike Rush. Drive, on the other hand, has this flame tank. It has been spotted. Bike Rush knows about it, but Bike Rush is moving into the middle of the map. We already saw Bike Rush clear out a lot of the blue Tiberium with a double harvester sneaking into the middle of the map. And the tier three will get killed off here. Possible that Bike Rush can save this, but with the number of bikes that have been committed into this attack, yep, Drive will get the kill there. So nicely done, gets a refinery, gets the tier three, and gets out with almost all of the bikes, if not all of the bikes. Can't even pick off a couple of buildings on exit. Phenomenal strike here from Drive. The double flame tank plus the bikes. Bike Rush owns on the other side of the map, kind of just needs to get the kill on a drive. Tier three did get silenced by Bike Rush owns. Drive has a lot of scorpions, and since he is Nod, he does almost have that laser capacitor upgrade finish. He would have loved to have that on the front line to deal with this attack. And this isn't do or die for Bike Rush owns, but it's very close with his aggressive drone ship positioning, with his stasis out in the middle of the map. He needs to do some massive damage here to drive to make this all work. Shredder turrets getting deployed onto the front line, and it is a lot of Scorpion tanks with those laser capacitor upgrades that Bike Rush has to deal with. Tripods have reformed the front line. Not a lot of infantry going down to in that redeem zone to give him some awakened squads, but at least one did get deployed. Not massive EMPs here. The recon drones will get called in to provide repairs, and those tripods are just shredding everything that Drive has. No more reinforcements really left out on the field for Drive. Buzzer Hive gets deployed, and Drive will get torn apart at his natural expansion. The GG gets called, and Bike goes up 2-0 in the grand finals of the autumn duel. A, an impressive strike from Drive, but it happened because Bike Rush Owns was focused on the other side of the map and not willing to send huge amounts of reinforcements. Bike Rush Owns had his eye on the prize, and Drive was not able to shove away that final attack to survive in game number one. And since we are in the grand finals, I do want to give another shout out to a Reminder for making me aware of this event, sending me the replays, and also to another Stas and Svensson for donating the $200 prize pool. By the way, down in the lower bracket, Futurama will win $40 as that was the third place prize. And these two guys, Drive and Bike Rush Owns, are fighting for the difference of 60 or $100. So not a huge amount of cash, but it's always nice to have a little bit of money on the line for these events. And again, we have another Stas and Svensson to thank for that. By the way, once again, Drive has designed the artwork for this event. So if you have not picked up the wallpaper pack in the description, you can pick up Drive's wallpaper pack down there. We have desktop, you know, 16 by nine, but we also have ultra wide and mobile designs as well. So you got a nice little range there for whatever device you want. 
and hopefully that's enough coverage for you. But Drive, unfortunately, down 0-2 in this best of 11 it is a long series but you know having it be game number two and feel like it's game number three already from the drive perspective is not a good start to this series he's still got time to make the comeback happen and tiberium rift is a good map to do it on by the way traveler 59 verse black hand so it is very similar to scrin verse nod but it is a little bit different and this is a big ish map but it is still a map that infantry can be extremely powerful on so we have infantry and mind control versus you know we have got alien infantry versus human infantry and in this case it is going to be a battle of the masses if any previous games are a good indicator no double war factory right from the get-go for drive he instead has walked his mcv quite the distance down to the natural expansion might even be going for a refinery first against scrin instead of that double war factory he is also going for the middle of the map he's going for that blue tiberium right away he doesn't want to wait around for it and it is going to be a refinery so it's third refinery for drive Bike Rochon's not too much of a surprise to see a screen player go third refinery. Could be fast tech on three refineries for the screen if he wants to get into that prodigy cultist kind of territory very quickly. You do need the tier three for that. Wouldn't be surprised to see Portal and a stasis chamber as the follow up. And there we go for Bike Rush Owns because he is playing Traveler. This is exactly how he played Traveler earlier in this same tournament. And there's actually going to be the secret shrine. So the black hand answer to the uh, Traveler 59 shenanigans. It is going to be the secret shrine. Not a fourth refinery, not a second war factory from Drive. Instead, the secret shrine. And he did manage to steal a full load of blue Tiberium with that harvester. So he will at least have that. Beacon does get deployed. Bike Rochon says, I see your secret shrine and we expect black disciples and nothing else from drive he actually started it he started purifying flame and then he just sold off that uh he sold off the secret shrine we do have tier two out on the map i don't think we have tier three it must be queued up right now and actually all right ravagers out on the map advanced articulators has already finished up so the ravagers are born with their fast legs i guess they're warped in i guess this is like teleportation from the other side of the galaxy other side of the universe actually i don't know where the screen are they based in the milky way galaxy or are they somewhere else i don't know i guess it doesn't really matter but they're they're warped in you know from other worldly locations just like the protoss warping in from the other side of the you know universe or whatever ravagers maybe they'll be able to get a couple of kills they kill a scouting buggy at least that's actually kind of nice for drive that he knows that those uh does a scan come in why is there a red dot in drive's base I'm not sure what that is on the mini map but uh usually that's a scan indicator but yeah Bike Rush owns. He's now into the base of Drive. Gets the splash damage on two of those Harvesters. Almost gets a kill on the Harvester. Should be able to finish it off with his regular attack. And yep, there he gets the kill on that Harvester. And that's going to be a wormhole coming in for the Prodigy to steal a Flame Tank and also the MCV. And bye-bye to the MCV. Engineer can head off towards the Operations Center. And the Tier 3 will get torched down oh drive unfortunately for drive the area mind control lasts just long enough for the oh and he steals the flame tank he teleports it back to the other side of the map and drive now uh accidentally sends it just get the get a kill on a power plant or something 
I don't know that that flame tank will actually escape to the other side of the map. I think the cultist will catch up to it, but maybe not. Maybe the flame tank can outrun the cultist, which would be good for drive. Couple of rocket squads moving into the base of Bike Rush Owns, but they will ultimately be defeated, and the flame tank just got grabbed by the cultist. So adding insult to injury there as drive loses his tier three and now has to kill his own flame tank very unfortunate there for drive to have to deal with that and bike rush owns just cementing his lead in this series he's already up 2-0 in map score and now he is up massively in the mental game of this map number two between these two guys drive had an amazing comeback on this map in the semifinal an amazing performance in that game but i don't know that it's gonna happen again here against bike rush owns in the grand finals i feel like bike rush owns has this game a little bit more well in hand than that other game on this same map but you always maintain hope no matter what, you got to maintain that hope because Drive can start the comeback. And he has quite a spread of infantry on this map. He's quite ready for the bike rush aggression. Cultists moving to the front line. Gunwalkers as well. It is a double hand of Nod. I worry about Drive's income. He's at plus 10k per minute, but he's only got one base to fuel that on. And part of it is his income is fueled by selling off structures. So he lost his tier three, lost his operations center from the sell off, lost his MCV, had to rebuild, sends his MCV to the front line and sells it off. It is a triple hand of Nod basically an all-in from this point forward he's got his economy and it is very soon going to turn into long distance mining so bike rush owns has to hold off this wave area mind control is an amazing way to do it prodigy running away from the front line and buzzer hives can extend out this fight by quite a while the prodigy the gunwalkers they can really make this happen. Oh, okay. Well, it's going to be phase. So now you have to run away, which just gives Bike Rush Owns more time to either build buzzer hives, build more units, waste more of his opponent's time. And uh, Drive is not necessarily getting stronger every moment that goes by. Drive actually powering down one of his hand of nod so he doesn't just feed units into the crushing machine that is these gunwalkers. That gunwalker actually isn't phased. That one can die. Area mind control comes in once again for these units. And the phase has finally wore off, so those gunwalkers will be eaten alive by the rockets. But uh, these harvesters are not in a safe place. They should uh, not have been sent forward in that moment. But it's about so much time for Bike Rush Owns. That phase just delayed that attack. Well, a bunch of rockets ended up going down. And now the front line has been reformed. But Drive has burned through his bank. And triple hand of Nod, you know, infantry are cheap, but they're not free. You do burn through a lot of cash, burnt, building a ton of infantry all in one big push. And uh, yep, there's the GG from Drive. I was going to say Drive doesn't have a whole lot left that he can sell off, but he's got nothing that he can sell off now because he has sold off everything. 3-0 is now the score for Bike Rush Owns. He's feeling good heading into game three. Tournament Crater is another one of those maps that I was mentioning earlier on in this video that I feel like every time I see it, it's a good game. I always love to see this map in the north. Switching it up to Nod. This is Bike Rush Owns. Meanwhile, in the south, going for that Traveler 59. We'll see how he can do. This is Drive. It is game number three, and normally the map score is minus one from the game number, but in this case, it's the same as the game number. EMP Control Center gets grabbed by both players immediately. And we'll do a quick wrap. We'll do a quick uh, round to see if everyone has captured their Tiberium spikes. Yes, indeed they have. So it is good to see 
everyone gets their Tiberium Spikes. No engineers are left standing next to Tiberium Spike for several minutes. And uh, the result is double EMP, quad Tib Spikes, all under the control of their respective players. Not a big surprise, no one goes for the Mutant Hovel. Oh well. Drive did try that in uh, on Tournament LA, but uh, it just it didn't seem to work out one way or the other. But Bike Rush owns, switches to his classic nod. After playing the Scrin Factions for a couple of games, he's like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go classic, gonna go old school. Nod, of course, back in the day, you could hardly get Bike Rush owns to play anything other than Black Hand in a tournament game. These days, a little bit more well-rounded, a little bit more even distribution of factions. He does still tend to play what he thinks is best. Oftentimes that is based on the map, but you know, he will also just play anything anywhere if it comes down to it. And in this case, it is gonna be classic Nod. Could be fast tech. It is going to be two war factories right out of the gate. We'll see if he goes super aggro with this. Some players just use this to get up a little group of bike buggy. They can be aggressive with it if the opportunity presents itself, but they're not necessarily going, you know, they're not necessarily going super hard to go ultra aggressive. They just want the safety and the security of that fast second war factory. Any kind of seeker tank pressure that comes their way, they know they can deal with it. They know they'll have the numbers to deal with it. And again, if the opportunity presents itself, they will be able to cross the map and do some damage. Portal comes up. Stasis chamber after that. Are we following the same playbook? Drive going for that delayed portal. The delayed advanced articulators, but still getting them goes to sense doesn't get a couple of cultists oftentimes you do see those cultists come out quickly after the stasis chamber gets deployed so we'll see if he switches it up now that he's got it and uh no he does produce just a couple of more descents so even though the stasis is up which by the way bike gets pretty much the perfect scout on sees the stasis he can uh you know identify or infer everything else and he knows the playbook from this traveler 59 player drive back online with the power bike rush owns he's right at the edge of being underpowered or uh, not having enough electricity to go around operation center should be coming up for bike rush uh, i guess he could be going third war factory but yeah it is going to be the operation center gets himself a couple of upgraded power plants just to make his life a little bit easier and bike rush owns can then go for that fast tech i guess it's not really fast tech just normal tech timing Maybe he will go directly after the tier three. He will go directly for those one clicks. Be able to cross the map, shut down a refinery nice and easy. And then he also has the tip vein detonation in case he needs it. Ravagers rushing right past buggies, rushing right past shredder turrets, going deep into enemy territory. And uh, well, they are going really deep into enemy territory. I did not think they were going to be going this far past all, everything out the front line. Snipes himself a Harvester. Maybe he can come back in a little bit later. Maybe he can get a little bit more with these Ravagers. We shall see. Would have been nice if he could have gotten the Blue Tiberium Harvester, but oh well. Prodigy is out on the map. One click's potentially coming in. Bikes find a couple of uh, shots against these Harvesters. Gonna find one Harvester for sure. Drive is not going to be feeling very good versus those bikes, but uh, you know, at least he's got his own harvester kill on the other side of the map. The Ravagers doing nicely to kill a harvester and uh, still escape with their lives. They're over here on the right side of the map, hanging out, ready to dodge in at another point. Venom heads over, says, All right, no Ravagers, I'm still going to keep an eye on this section of the map in case. Whoa, that, tri that tripod had a long, long shadow. The Venom is going to keep an eye on the right side of the map in case any Ravagers show up to harass that Blue Tiberium Harvester. And uh, this would be the perfect time for Drive to rush in with those Ravagers. No Venoms if you play Black Hand. Yes, Venoms if you play Nod or Marked of Cain. But if you play just vanilla Nod, you get those Venoms. So when you're dealing with those Traveler 59 infantry goofiness, you at least have the Venoms 
of course, if you get the plasma missile battery, you should be thinking about getting the shard launcher upgrade as well, because it just makes those plasma missile batteries so, so good. Laser capacitors has finished up, so Venoms, Buggies, and Scorpions, virtually every unit that Bike Rush has in this game, they are all upgraded. Massive slow field will catch a lot of these Scorpions, will give more time for drive to respawn. Tripods are here. They do not have the force field upgrade. And, uh, well, Traveler 59, you make some concessions. So, slightly weaker tripods. Ooh. <laughs> Could have been a little bit of lag. Sometimes there is an observer in this game. I believe Zads was casting these games live. But sometimes you hit a bit of lag that causes you to place that refinery backwards. Also, sometimes you just place a refinery backwards. It happens to all of us, and it is very unfortunate when it happens in the grand finals when you are down 0-3 in a grand finals of a tournament. And Bike Rush Jones, he is not rushing to one clicks. This is all very normal timings. This is all very standard play for Bike Rush Jones. He is not playing particularly cheesy. He is not playing super aggressive. He's just kind of playing normal, and he is getting some wins from it. Area mind control comes in. The front line will be held for a moment. Rage Gen fires off, and these tripods will be blinked back from the front line so that they are preserved. But the EMP lands on top of the Devastator warship. The tripods have their wings clipped, their legs cut off, because these scorpions will not stop crushing forward. And this tripod is now going to try and return the favor, crushing his own scorpions, crushing the scorpions in his path. And that Redeemer is going to back on off from the front line and try and go for the kill, I'm guessing, on this drone ship. Everything else of drives gets crushed by this attack. This one tripod won't be able to hold the line forever, but the EMP does land. The Redeemer does go offline for a moment there, and uh, eventually drives phase does wear off, and there is no escape for this drone ship. Yeah, this stuff doesn't shoot up, but when you're that low on health, you also can't take off without just dying to all of the firepower. Drive has had a good run in this tournament, making it super deep, defeating Futurama, defeating Shock Trepid, but the final boss is Bike Rush Owns once again. And when the map score is 0-4, the likelihood of a comeback is very low. It's a best of 11, so hope does still exist for Drive, but every game that goes on, it gets less and less likely that he will mount the comeback and make the ultimate win that is necessary, the ultimate run that is necessary to defeat Bike Rush Owns. And here on Tournament Los Angeles, we have a switch up once again happening between these two players. It's GDI versus Scrin for game four of Bike Rush Owns vs. Drive. Tournament Los Angeles, always love to see it. Scrin for Bike Rush, well, it could be a very big eco game, but in the south playing GDI, he is going to have the best shot if he can make it to the late game, if Drive can get himself in the driver's seat of this match, take it late, get into that juggernaut place, maybe even turtle up, get in there, and make sure that he has control of the screen player. You do not want to be getting into the late game where you are lagging behind the screen player, where the screen has the option of the stasis shield. They have the option of the wormhole. They have the option of that hexapod. You want to be there first. You want to have control of the game and of the pace by that point. If you're the GDI player, the late game is where you have a lot of success, but you absolutely cannot get there accidentally because if the screen player is in the driver's seat, the late game will be a nightmare for you. Still possible. Anything is always possible. 
but Bike Rush is not playing bad today. He is in tip-top form. He is looking good, and he's playing Scrin. It's a tough combo. For all you folks who love Scrin, this is going to be a good one to see. Good series to see, I should say. With Bike Rush Owens playing Scrin, really good just matches to model yourself after. Take a look at the replays, take a look at what Bike Rush Owens does, and you will learn a lot about how to play a seemingly very straightforward version of Scrin. This is not a tricky Scrin that he's going for. We're not even seeing some big descent push that some players like to do with Scrin. Uh, it's just, you know, so far it is very standard, very normal. It's not even like super crazy with the scouting. You know, he's mostly just going for buzzer scouts. He is going for a gunwalker scout through the middle of the map, but it is also going to be spotting this APC rocket combo that is headed towards his main base. So this is, I feel like, you know, just a great one to watch. He does go fast nerve center. So it is a quick nerve center. Dev tanks are on the menu does give you that option and apcs they need to all be together for sure lightning spike to help hold off this front line and maybe a dev tank yes it indeed it is a dev tank plasma missile battery as well so bike rush owns has perfectly read this double airfield transition and here's the thing i actually wonder did bike rush see this for sure or is this just a blind read this is a blind read by bike rush now, this is not one of those things that is so crazy that you should not expect it. This is like a pretty, not common, but like a pretty regular thing to happen. It's at the four minute mark. Even if you see the rig, this definitely telegraphs that their player already has the command post. So you know that the Orca strike might be coming in. You know that the Orcas are a possibility, but this is eight Orcas from drive sub five minutes. A, now this is not the fastest eight Orcas possible, but this is an extremely aggressive air build from drive and it has been cut off by the presence of these plasma missile batteries. Gunwalkers are here as well, and these orcas take massive damage from that sprint anti-air. We'll see if the APCs can help them get some damage. Three plasma missile batteries. It's only two harvesters. It's not worth it. Two orcas have already gone down, and Drive is feeling the pressure. Six orcas commit into the attack. Three of them go down. Five orcas for one harvester. Devastation for drive. Anything would have been better than committing the to the orcas in this game, but that's hindsight. Drive didn't know that Bike Rush was going to have a blind read on hey i think this apc timing is you know a little bit late i think he went for airfield behind this i think there's more to worry about than just these apcs and i'm not sure when bike rush owns saw the rig because when you see the rig you know that they've already got the command post you know that they had the command post a little while ago so you know that the orcas are a obvious choice and there are a lot of double airfield builds on this map, so it's a uh, it's a good read by Bike Rush Owens. Dev tanks fully charged up, ready to make trouble for drive. Snipe a harvester just to make sure that you get one back for the harvester you lost earlier. And the one dev tank does go down, but Bike Rush Owens is more than happy to trade that one out in this case. Bike Rush Owens slow on the harvester transition. I actually don't know why. He's got so many harvesters just backed up at his main base. Maybe he was also stealing that blue Tiberium from the middle of the map, but he only has three harvesters working at this natural expansion, and now a fourth harvester is going to join them. So Bike Rush owns very low on harvester count overall in terms of working harvesters in this game, but he is about to rectify that. He's gonna solve that problem. Another Orca gets sniped here in the middle of the map. It's the dev tanks that have the repair advantage and a harvester just being given away here. Drive says, I guess I don't have enough work for you. Go and die on the front lines. Buy some time 
for my predator tanks to uh, get an extra couple of shots off and well truly drive does have a surplus of harvesters so i guess you don't need the extra one he could even send one harvester back to his main base and still be fully saturated at his natural i mean he is more than set in terms of harvesters drive still has these charged up dev tanks to worry about and drive his income is super strong but he has also been throwing away so much money over the course of this game partially in those eight orcas that he built but also just not having the ground army to deal with bike rushes forces quickly means he has been bleeding a lot of units to these dev tanks and to this extended attack that bike rush has been going for well hammerhead almost goes down that was almost the end of the air forces of a drive the gg gets called and drive after a uh, couple of failed attacks there does have to tap out from game number four and that puts bike rush owns into match point position so drive has one last chance to keep his hope alive and the comeback has to start right here right now and game five takes us to winter meltdown another little bit of a switch up here because as bike rush owns is back to scrin it's actually drive who's switching it up going to steal talons and i love that kind of a switch up from drive the steel talons play in game number five with your tournament life on the line in the grand finals versus a screen player not even a nod player but a screen player and he goes steel talons i think the mrt combo is telegraphed here by the keeping of the barracks he didn't even sell off the barracks to get the little bit of a cash boost so that you rebuild the barracks a little bit later if you're going for two refi or two harvesters you get the one harvester out of the uh out of the war factory and bike rush owns being as annoying as possible gets both of the buzzers into those buildings his scouting ability is going to be perfect because he will have two buildings to hide his buzzers in and there is no quick way to kill off the buzzers in those buildings for drive mrt's loaded up with rifles loaded up with rockets and this has been spotted by bike rush owns drive is low on cash so instead of going for a second refinery he is instead going to suffer the low power mode and he is going to cross the map with that mcv this is one of those things where drive doesn't have the cash to build anything quickly so he keeps his mcv around just long enough to get out that second harvester and then he's like okay i'm gonna move for my expansion i'm gonna build up a little bit of cash get a little bit of uh building done on my next harvester while i walk over to my natural expansion and fortunately drive is not just giving up he is focused on the later stages of this game this is not even an all-in from him it is a very very aggressive version of this mrt attack and he has sacrificed economy to make this happen so if he does not get some pretty significant damage out of bike rush owns and not just like oh he got out a portal and some descent and a photon cannon like he needs some more significant damage than that stasis oh i mean if he had killed off the stasis chamber and uh if the stasis shield had been a whiff oh the rockets inside of those mrts is that a glitch i mean it's not one that drive is doing intentionally it's not like drive glitched something but uh I did not realize that rockets inside of MRTs could still fire inside of a stasis. So that is actually f fantastic for drive. He gets some mine drops. He unfortunately does not get to garrison up this building. That would have been one of those things that maybe would have given, an, uh, given him an opportunity to do a little bit more damage if he had been able to get some of those units into the building instead of them just dying inside of the MRTs. But 
you know, you'll take a, a slightly better situation with a couple of those mines cleaning up some units than a slightly worse situation. So drone ship takes a lot of damage as those rockets landed some kind of lucky shots from inside of the stasis. I'm guessing Bike Rush Owens is not going to be happy about that, but he got the complete shutdown of those MRTs and uh, drive. You know, he knows that the stasis can't be used for a couple of minutes, but that was such an early stasis that by the time all of the good stuff is back, is up and running, the stasis is going to be off of cooldown and Bike Rashon sold off his stasis chamber. So he's not even worried about that. He's not keeping a close eye on that stasis chamber, on that stasis shield cooldown. Instead, he's just ready to go to the late game. He's ready to rumble. He's happy with his position here in this tournament, and he's going to put a bit of pressure on the natural expansion of Drive. He's got these Gunwalkers. He's got some Descents scouting out the rest of the map, keeping an eye on everything. Descents going to move in, try and do some damage to these Harvesters. They're going to get cleaned up, and the MRT makes that an easy cleanup for those harvesters not even really any lost mining times oh powered up dev tanks i didn't realize there were two charged up dev tanks with this attack so they're going to start chipping away at that refinery and at the same time a couple of corruptors show up it's low power mode for a moment there for drive he finally gets himself back online but it is so much damage done at the natural expansion and drive loses his command center i love the steel talons choice by drive but he is out of cash and his economy has been gutted his natural has been busted and bike rush owns <laughs> i mean drive did go tier three super fast so he does have mammoth tanks actually out on the field and the mammoth tank will push back this attack but man bike rush owns can do whatever he wants even deploys <laughs> refinery in an extremely awkward position not sure why but for whatever reason bike rush owns has deployed that refinery there and is now retreated from the front line so uh we will see if this tech <laughs> i mean the airfield has already been sold off the tier the tick the tier two has been killed but uh okay what is going on this is now this is now kind of weird bike rush deploys that extractor in a back position and then drive deploys this refinery backwards so either there is some big lag spikes in this game or both players misplaced refineries one after the other i mean we had that other misplaced refinery in the last series as well so i'm not sure uh what's going on in this game misplacing refineries but the tier three being held on for drive is definitely nice i wish he would have had the cash to get rail guns a lot sooner but uh you know you gotta try something storm riders showing up uh i guess bike rush owns should have actually gone like eight storm riders he should have held the storm riders instead of signaling that he's got it but he might actually be going one storm rider and then hoping for a massive overcommitment. uh i don't know what that watchtower is for yeah the funny thing is the command post is only just now getting deployed again so drive couldn't even like massively overspend on anti-air and now the storm rider is is kind of just gone and it's like okay well you didn't swing through with eight storm riders and yeah the possibility of going for eight storm riders is there but there are also other very real threats out on the map Railguns, it looks like, is almost finished up, so Drive has been prioritizing that. A lot of cash has been spent, a long time has been spent upgrading it. It's a minute and a half, it's a long upgrade, and uh, low power mode will delay it for a moment longer, but there we go. We get our Railguns, our Mammoth Tanks are awesome now. As Steel Talons, you don't feel complete until you have Railguns. Would have loved to see some Titan Presence also in this game, but... We love it to see the Mammoth Tanks, so we are happy with the Mammoth Tanks, with those rail guns. Gunwalkers and Dev Tanks going to be making this a bit of an awkward move out for Drive. He had already sent 
three mammoth tanks to the front line to try and move into the middle of the map and he has to turn them around bring them back home and crush this scrin force which isn't difficult when you've got four railgun mammoths not difficult to kill off a couple of screen units but it just buys more time for bike rush owns to build up those tripod numbers to get this third base even more established and hey i got my titan wish after all and he actually he has adaptive armor as well so he can call in uh you know railgun accelerators if he wants he can uh, go for... I don't know that he actually has Railgun Accelerators. Uh, I think he maybe sold off his MCV. Let's see. No, no, he kept his MCV. He's going for the third base. Again, he is uh, he's not just giving up. His tournament life is on the line, but he is not just throwing in the towel, and one Harvester does go down. Might also get the tip spike. Growth Accelerator is here, so that's an easy kill for these units. Just look at the Growth Accelerator with Railguns, and it will die. It might actually die to one hit from a Titan. And Hammerheads show up, okay. Not what I was expecting. Hammerheads, we saw them being constructed earlier, but I was still surprised when they actually showed up to help out with this fight. We'll get the snipe on that husk as well. And unfortunately for the Titan, the Hammerheads were a little bit too late to save the Titan, but they're just in time to kill off this Tib Spike. And they will stick around for a minute to get the kill on that Tib Spike. And Bike Rush Owns is not going super aggro. He probably could have gone for, I don't know, like 20 descents and a bunch more like gun walkers and dev tanks and he probably could have ended the game if he wanted to play it super aggressively but he's happy to play this one out a little bit slower he got that extremely uh, powerful attack early on he got the very valuable kill of the economy of the natural expansion for drive and bike rush owns is happy to hit the brakes a little bit in terms of aggression we saw a little bit of a poke and a prod earlier but he's happy to play for that later game and just stay ahead keep yourself ahead get ahead get even further ahead and that is going to be bike rush's philosophy in this game i'm ahead I'm gonna get even further ahead with the eco, with the army, faster to the epic unit by a good margin. And I mean, technically the tier three has been around for a long time, but there has been no reclamator hub out on the map. So Drive is gonna have to do this fight without a Marv. And he does have quite a mammoth tank lineup. They're not all here on the front line at the same time. I think he has, Okay, no, he doesn't. I thought he had Grenadiers inside of the Heavy Harvesters, but no, he does not. If he had EMP grenades, that would be phenomenal, but he doesn't. Gunwalkers tearing apart these Hammerhead Stasis holds on to three of these Mammoth Tanks, and the jump forward will happen from the Eradicator. Unfortunately, the behemoths are nowhere to be found, so Drive's full firepower is not here to land on this Scrin army. He gets broken apart, and now his mammoth tanks are cut off from everywhere else. The EMPs land, and the mammoths will not survive this fight. Unfortunately for Drive, his behemoths are way out on the north side of the map, nowhere near this engagement. A couple of tripods will be going down, and the Eradicator will take some pretty massive damage. The EMP landing there, allowing the Mammoths to do some big, big damage to that Eradicator. Maybe. Wow, he actually forced the phase. He might have gotten a kill on that Eradicator if it hadn't been for the phase, but he probably wouldn't have killed all of the tripods, and he wouldn't have killed all of the Storm Riders either. So Bike Rush Owens still would have had some gas in the tank. He still would have been able to keep that attack going. But the phase means that the Eradicator will escape safely. And the rest of the units are kind of on their own. They no longer have that protective sponge of the Eradicator to take the fire off of them. And the Eradicator now is going to blink away very low on health, extremely low on health. If that mammoth tank got one more shot, that Eradicator would have been dead. It needs a second teleport to save it. The Mastermind actually has to blink it all the way back across the map. And Bike Rush Owns takes the contested 
quote unquote fourth field from the middle of the map he gets two refineries onto it and drive realizes this he knows that he has been fighting from a losing position this entire game he actually gets a kill on a harvester not often do you see that orca strike get a kill on a harvester but you have seen it here in the grand finals of the autumn duel drive knows that he has been playing with his tournament life on the line and he knows that he has been playing from a back foot for pretty much this entire time but he is still giving it his all and if a couple of things had gone a little bit differently he would have had much more of a fighting chance if bike rush owns had slacked off a little bit in this game if he hadn't played you know as aggressively with that earlier strat if he hadn't been able to lock down all of those mammoth tanks with the stasis things would have been different but bike rush owns he got ahead and he has stayed in a commanding position in this game especially economically 50k of an advantage over his opponent 15 minutes into this game bike rush owns is not taking this one laying down he is not giving an inch and he will take this grand finals series with a 6-0 map score without giving a single game away once again bike rush owns showing dominant form in another tournament and drive playing extremely well throughout the entirety of the event going up against bike rush owns having a phenomenal game number two there dropping down into the lower bracket you know he made his way through the group stage made his way through most of the playoffs to that upper bracket semifinal comes through the lower bracket defeats shock trepid defeats futurama gets his rematch with bike rush owns but just isn't up to the task and that will do it for the autumn duel once again a big thanks to reminder for sending me to the replays making me aware of this event big thanks to another stas and svensson for donating the 200 dollars prize pool congratulations to bike rush owns on yet another tournament victory and a hundred dollars from the pockets of those sponsors that will do it for this series for this video for this event for my coverage of this tournament thank you all very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and this is cyber signing out